one. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Snake Talk or whatever we're going to be talking about tonight. <laughs> it's been a few weeks. Has it been three weeks? Yeah, it's been three, three weeks. Three weeks, I think, yeah. Yeah, because we were at Tinley two weeks ago, yep. and then last week, uh, what were we last week? I don't remember. <laughs> last week wasn't Tinley. Or, oh, yeah. Oh, you I were, got you sick. sick. I got yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. So Jay was sick, and then I left town on Sunday for Texas. Took a hike. So. So yep, so uh, so we are back. Lots we're to talk excited about. To, to yeah, we're excited to talk to you guys. I appreciate everyone joining me in the chat gang, and um, it's always good to see you guys. And I appreciate all your support on everything. It's going to be uh, we got a lot to talk about, really. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, I mean, after the three weeks of you know being gone, a lot of things pile up on on to talk about. So um, I think we'll jump in. And as always, by the way, you guys can jump in the conversation by super chatting as much as you want. I do appreciate all of your support. Um, we can jump into kind of the the Tinley uh, talk right off the bat Heck because yeah, uh, obviously I had not been to Tinley since 2017. Yeah. Uh, so so five years as well. Was actually, I think it was six years actually. Yeah, about the six mark. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it was six years since I've, I've been to Tinley, uh, and that was the last time I, ironically enough, had ever vended a show. I, I haven't vended. A reptile show since and then i didn't go to any reptile show until we were in north carolina durham, the durham show, which is yeah. yeah the riley durham show and the only reason i really went to that honestly was because we were stuck in town on a mr b shoot and it just and, happened we, we hit all the animal stuff in that area so we yeah. just like that was the only thing left to do yeah <laughs> i mean we literally like every zoo slash you know aquarium slash whatever we could find in the area we went to and uh and, and it just so happened that the reptile show happened there and then i did go to um uh, the the Scott Smith show also yes we went to that as yep. well um, so so there's two reptile shows in six years all, all well all of the shows have been in the last twelve months yeah so it's about five years without going to any reptile show and then uh, I should say in the country because I had been to a couple of reptile shows out of the country right right, um, right. but in the country and then uh, so Tinley happened uh, I see my man Dingo is in the house the Dingleman he What's says hey you on, biscuits Dingo. so feel good bad to see you. I haven't really uh, I had a chance to chat with him much I've been so busy with travel and and everything else going on and uh, I saw I, I I have it queued up on my, my <laughs> the new video yeah, yeah. the new video I, I haven't see got it? to see it yet but I have it queued I'm going to watch it because I've got it queued up I watch it tonight when I get home because uh, it looks absolutely hilarious. I mean, the, the, his face in the <laughs> thumbnail is so good, dude. It's going to be a good one. I, I could just tell it's going to be a good one. So I, I like know he it. was really proud of it, too, so I can't wait to watch it. Oh, good, good, good. I, the, the thing I loved is that Crocodile Kyle, uh, uh, and I commented to, to his his Instagram post because he he made the one thing about the like biosecurity. No, he did it. No. Yeah, like like Dingo had a biosecurity yeah, whatever yeah. and it was like him putting a glove on or something like that. And and, and Kyle like screenshotted that oh, and no. said something like I can't remember like <laughs> like tag me next yeah, time yeah. or something. And uh so I, I like you know LOL to to Kyle because <laughs> so it, it's so funny, you know, it is so true how uh just different people are about things. So uh but Yeah, it anyways. is very funny. But um but you know, regardless uh um, you know, Tinley was, you know, obviously there was a, a number of reasons why I stopped doing reptile shows. I stopped vending reptile shows because I was just done vending reptile shows. Right. You know, I've been vending to, reptile yeah. shows since I was 15, 16 years old. And I was just at the point where, you know, our online business was doing well enough to where it didn't make sense. Like, you know, so say, say we have a ball python for $200 on the website, you know, which is a retail price, right? Um, you know, when you go to a reptile show, you've got all the people that are underbidding you. So right. it's $150. And you have the stress on the animal, the cost to do the show, you know, whether it's table fees or travel, or travel, gases, employees. hotels, stuff like that. So you're really getting about 100. And then, you know, it's 150 on the table. And then someone's going to come off you 125. And so you're really selling a snake for about 110 bucks. In the grand scheme of things with expenses, if, you know, just generality, you know, but, but my point is, is that is, isn't it smarter to just stay home and sell it for $200, not have the stress, not only on yourself, but certainly on the animals. Um, not to mention, I tell you what, I am a firm believer that if you do reptile shows, you will have snake mites. Um, especially if you do over the weekend shows, right? Because right. you got to remember what mites are, snake mites are, is they're nomadic, right? Yeah. So a mite, can travel up to 20 feet in the in a night which so, is a lot right a show, so, yeah. so if you you can't tell me when you have 
400 tables of reptiles that not one of those tables has a snake mite. And if you just happen to be unlucky and get within two or three tables of a table with snake mites and your snakes are there Friday night, Saturday night, chances are pretty good you're coming home with mites. Right. And, uh, and so since we stopped doing shows, we were because we were always like battling like we we wouldn't have mites then we get mites after a show and then we get rid of them and then we wouldn't have mites and then we do a show and then we get mites again and so so since we stopped doing reptile shows we just haven't had mites you know what i mean it's been mite free for years and um and, and that's just such an important thing when you're keeping snakes not to mention like i said the stress on the actual animals and yourself you know right. doing all that stuff so that's why i stopped vending reptile shows and then i stopped going to reptile shows because of course right around that time you know, quite, you know, just honestly is when, you know, like people started really shitting on me in the reptile community. And, and so it became very uncomfortable to go to a reptile show for right. me, uh, because of all the negativity. Now, now I think, you know, a number of things have happened in the last six years to kind of, you know, there's, st listen, there's still, it's, it's funny because who posted something, um, just recently, somebody, I can't remember like, a. Um, gosh, I cannot remember who it is, but somebody posted a video with me in it that was like um, a pretty mainstream type of thing. And I, I, I was just like, oh boy, here we go. The, I, right, I, I right, didn't right. want to see the comments, you know uh, what right, I mean? Because right, right, right. there's still like, when you get into those real like, Niche, you know, like yeah. yeah, like pet tuber type people, um, which I don't have a problem with the pet tubers. I, I just, I, I, when you get into that niche of pet tube, their audience typically still looks at me as like I'm the devil. Right, 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 right. For whatever reason, you know, I keep snakes in racks, even though they keep snakes in racks. I mean, it's a, it's a weird type of thing. It's like I know sometimes pet tubers will keep like, a, you know, snakes in racks, but they'll have like a flower in the cage. Yeah, it's and like so, that's fine. And somehow yeah. it's like, oh, well, as long as you got a flower in the cage, you know, you should be able to keep it in there. Um, so it's it's a weird thing, but, but I didn't look at the comments and stuff like that. But my point was is that, you know, there's not a lot of hate towards me anymore. There's still that that faction of people that haven't left. I, I I remember the one comment I read on a video recently that I really liked, and I don't know if you saw this, Jay. It said it said Brian being a bad guy just isn't aging very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, did see yeah, that. yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, because because it's true. You know, I mean, it's like you know, it's like you know, over the last five or six years, we've done a lot of good things for people. Obviously, the reptarium education, conservation, yeah, reptile community, stuff. all that, and, and uh, yeah, the reptile community. And I think people are just like, you know, why did people think Brian was a bad guy? You know, and, and some of that stuff stemmed from stuff that was eight or nine years ago uh, with videos that you know at the time were uh, completely acceptable. But if you look at them now, it, they would not be acceptable. And I and I own that. You know, I, I totally own that. And, and although I wouldn't change what I did back eight or nine years ago. I've learned and grown. As a matter of fact, I think leaving those videos up, which I could easily take them down, right. but leaving them up shows the growth that I've made, right? Yeah. And I think that's why most of the the hatred has gone away. It's and, like, and then I think the other thing is, is that that I don't care about it anymore. You right. know, it's like if someone does throw shade at me, I don't care. I just, it doesn't bother me. And the one thing that will stop hate is when you stop caring about hate, sure, you know, like, sure. cause, cause haters want you to care. They want you to feel, they want to ruin your life. They want you the know? reaction. Yeah, yeah. They want you to be sad. And, 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 and I'm, I just don't care anymore. So yeah. I, I like when I see a negative comment, I, I chuckle at it and, and usually write, you know, you, you seem like a nice person or something like that. <laughs> Which is as, always as, my favorite. That's usually what, what I write. But uh, um, but anyways, because I had another one the other day. It was, again, yeah. very rare we get these comments. I had another one the other day that was like, I wish you would die. You're a piece of <laughs> You're shit. You're like, Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a like, YouTuber. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, jeez, yeah. you wish I'd die. I mean, <laughs> yeah. wow, that's a little strong, you know? And that's the thing, but, right, is it kind of like works like telephone, where like the person that initially gave you hate knew you know said one thing about you and then as it carries yeah. through these lineage of facebook groups and stuff it just gets tangled up yeah and even like the old videos like yeah that's just how life works things are acceptable before that aren't now like think about tropic thunder you couldn't yeah. make tropic thunder today at no, all no, dude no, no chance yeah. no way but no way. but again like you said there's no use taking it down you have to sh keep your past up and just live with it yeah Learn exactly it. but so anyways that had some to do and let's hit these couple supers yeah. just so i can keep the supers in in check here uh as we go yeah, Silvercash says, I cut my second clutch on Monday. Thanks for everything. Awesome, man. Good for you, Congrats, dude. Congrats, bro. Um, and then Jimmy says, Twister sequel incoming? Twister sequel I don't know, but incoming. sure. I don't know what that means. I don't know, but let's let's make it happen. Let's make a sequel to Twister. 
I love the movie Twister. You know, obviously the the main character died, so uh, <laughs> not in the movie. In real life, he died. Oh, did he really? Yeah. So, uh, so that 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 isn't going to work. Um, <laughs> you know, with him at least, we'll just put you. But in I the don't game. know if he's talking about the movie. or He's talking about something completely different. I have no. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> Me neither. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. And then uh, Jason from Morph Mixology says, "What's up, Snake dudes? We're what talking about you this morning, Jason. Yeah, we did talk about you this morning. Terrible, terrible things. things. Yeah, horrible. Terrible, horrible things. No, you actually posted a picture of a hand uh, with a snake." Uh, uh, it looked like a, a dreamsicle on a cool, like kind of metal-y background. That that it was a really cool co- yeah, just composition. So cool. It was a cool picture, so we both uh, liked it. So good job on that. So so, anyways, um, so so I think that you know, uh, the, the those were all the things that kind of kept me away from reptile shows. Because I, I didn't feel, you know, and I still, you know, it's a weird thing. Like I love the reptile community and love the reptile hobby, and obviously I've dedicated my life. To, to expanding the hobby and and growing it from a, a, a you know really a closet type of a, a thing to to now such a mainstream business and, and I'm not saying that I take all of the credit for it obviously not uh, but I was a part of that of right you know I was a part of that growth uh, and, and and still am to some extent you know um, but but so it was it's 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 disappointing that really the the the, the there's a faction, and, and this is a very broad statement, but there's a faction of the reptile hobby that doesn't show any appreciation towards that and actually really wants me to not be a part of it. And that's really disappointing to me because, you know, I've, I don't think I've ever done anything to hurt the reptile hobby, and I've only done things that have benefited the reptile hobby. I mean, sure, there's probably little things I've done, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, on the macro level, right. uh, we've only helped the reptile hobby, and it's been something that I love so much. Um, so, so that's kind of what has kept me away from, uh, the reptile shows and, and in particular Tinley, because Tinley is the, the culmination of like all the reptile people in one spot. Right. right. You know, I mean, even when you do Pomona, which may actually be a, a more trafficked show and even maybe a little bit slightly bigger footprint, uh, I think it's now Anaheim, uh, in, 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 uh, I think they do Pomona and Anaheim, but I think Anaheim is the big one now. And uh, in January is always the biggest show. Uh, but it's still like a California show. Right, right. right? Mostly you know, people like, from that area, Yeah, I mean, right? some people go traveling, obviously. But for the most part, it's a California show. It's just a giant California show. Whereas Tinley, people are coming from all over the country and, and really all over the world. We've yeah. met people there from from Europe and Asia. Um, and uh, so so Tinley is that, that, that kind of central location so so I've, i i i i'm not gonna lie i had some nerves like driving in you know it's like oh man what's gonna happen how am i gonna do it and, and you got to remember you know other than the small couple shows i had been to i really haven't been to a big show since you know really youtube took off for us you know right. social took off for us i mean the last tinley i was vlogging but i had you know maybe a couple hundred thousand followers um and, and and not that that's not a lot, a couple hundred thousand still a lot, but you know, now we, you know, closing in on 4 million, it's a, it's a different world. And I just didn't know how that was going to go. Yeah. Not that I was worried about like, like, listen, I, you know, everyone that knows me and anyone that met me at Tinley will, will attest to this. Like I, I, I'm not one of those guys that's like, don't leave me alone. I'm afraid to touch. <laughs> no, touch the people. opposite. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I want to be in the thick of it. I love meeting people. I love shaking hands. I love, I gave more hugs and kisses that, that day than, you know, I so can't believe kisses. I didn't, I can't believe I, yeah, a lot of Frenchies. A lot of Frenchies. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't get COVID because I mean, I literally was, you know, like literally hugged almost every single person I met. Yeah. 6,000 people. I met hundreds crazy. and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, but, uh, but I, I didn't know how it was going to go. You don't know, you know, if you're going to walk in there, people going to, you know, welcome you. You know, they always say like, you never meet a hater. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And that's usually the case. Haters are usually online. And then we meet you in the person. They're like, you're such a great guy, you know? <laughs> and um, I, I remember I told a story at Tinley, the last Tinley I ever vended, there was this guy and I won't mention his name. I don't think he, he may or may not be in the reptile hobby anymore. I haven't, again, I don't follow it close enough to know, but I haven't heard his name brought up in many, many years. Um, at least, well, many, maybe two or three years. But uh, um, his name was Mike, by the way. I won't tell you his last name, but uh, his name is... Br- no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it rhymes with it, shenanigan. It, it, yeah, um, but uh, uh, I, I remember this was when Venom Hunters was out, you right. know, on Discovery Channel. And... Uh, I remember, like, it was an interesting thing with with that Venom Hunters thing for me. Was like the first episode, 
everybody liked it. I mean, I was getting like texts and messages and emails like, bro, you're going to be a star. This show is so awesome. Oh my God, I can't buy. By episode two, I mean, it was like, I w- I might as well have been stabbing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in the face with yeah, a knife, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was, I mean, it was like, the, the, so so first off, TV is never Ooh. real, right? And the whole of premise of the show is that I was going to get into the Venom world, you know, where I was going to sell Venom for antivenin and, and medical research, but total bullshit. I don't, I'm not selling. <laughs> it's a, you just want yeah. to see Venom and Snakes and they need a hook. Yeah, yeah. and, and then, listen, if you're going to buy Venom, uh, you know, you're going to do it from a Venom lab. You're not going to do it from some <laughs> Yahoo running around the outback of Australia with collecting <laughs> wild, yeah, gr- yeah, with his like khaki shorts or whatever, his polka dotted shorts and, uh, you know, milk and wild snakes and like Karaman is back. I mean, that's not how it works. Got there's, brown snake venom on the low, man. Hit yeah. me up. Yeah, I mean, there's literally venom labs that do that. That's so, so good. So, I mean, I, and I understand. So, so what ended up happening is the venomous community got, uh, got. I mean, they just got yes. up. They got an upper for two different reasons. One, that I was going to take over the venom world when I'm not a venomous guy. And number two, that was the thing. They, they were like, you're not a venomous guy. And my thing was like, what is a venomous guy? I mean, so do I have to keep cobras to be a venomous guy? Yeah. Like, even though I've handled, you know, black mambas in the wild in Africa, I've, I've handled, you know, uh, coastal taipans in the wild in, in Australia. I've caught, you know, all kinds of, you know, diamondback rattlesnakes and all kinds of rattlesnakes in America. I've been, you know, copperheads, like cotton mouths, you know, I've been dealing with, with venomous snakes since I was 15 years old, but I'm not a venomous guy. And I remember I actually did. A, true. Uh, I, I remember there was this one. Yeah, of course, you know, when you're, you're not, and I'm, I'm really getting off track. You're here, good, but, dude. but it's cool. Um, I did this, I did a lot of interviews, right? So out of the show, I was the guy that, that did all the press, right? You know, like, like, uh, they wanted me to be the, you know, the guy. Yeah, the news hit you up and was like, yeah, wanted yeah. to do this. And thing of course, you know, we, we, you know, with discovery, there's a lot of press, you know? So I, I went on a lot of radio shows. I went on a lot of TV shows. Um, and there, and I knew there was this one chick that was a science writer from Twitter and, um, and, and she had shit talked the show. I mean, I, I literally, she followed me and she would at me all the time. And, and so I saw like she shit talked the show and she requested an interview with me. Oh, yeah. And I remember talking to the, the discovery people saying, this is a got you uh, yeah. interview. This isn't a good interview for us. She's going to try to make us look bad. And, uh, and, and, and so they, the, the attorneys for discovery channel looked into it and they came back to me and they said, Hey, listen, we decided let's go ahead and do the, the interview. Uh, they had the, the, the publication she writes for has a decent following and, um, and we're going to have a publicist on the phone with you. It was a phone interview and, uh, we'll have a publicist on the phone with you. That way, if she gets out of control, our publicist will step in and, and shut it down. And I was like, that's fine. I, I go, I can handle myself, but that's good. No problem at all. Right. And, uh, and so, so the first thing she said was, she said, uh, so how does a ball Python guy become a venomous expert? That was her first question. Wild. And so I, my response to her was like, well, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that you should have done a little bit of research because you thinking I'm a ball python guy you do realize that about 80 percent of my my collection and have always 80 percent of my collection has not been ball pythons have been other reptiles right i said so you just saying that i'm a ball python guy insults the hell out of me like i don't know anything but ball pythons i said and by the way i've been dealing with venomous snakes since i was 15 years old i said now what's your next question yeah and, and like you the, the whole mood of the thing changed and she she was backtracking and and you know and and i i, I held my own through the, the interview but it was it was a definitely a gotcha like she didn't want me to look good in the interview she wanted to expose me for a fraud and in a way i was a fraud right because i wasn't doing venom for a living but i i was catching really very very very, very de- deadly venomous snakes. And I never got bit or anything like that. And I'm not, you know, again, you know, Dingo is 10 times the venomous guy than I am. You know what I mean? Like, I would never want to even think I'm in the league with a guy like Dingo when it comes to handling. As a matter of fact, that's what we've talked about. When I go there, I want to spend a couple of days just handling venomous reptiles with his tutelage to become better at it. Uh, so that, I, and again, I'm never going to say I'm an expert at anything. But, uh, but, but anyways, my point is, is that, that the venomous community lost their shit on me uh, on, on this. So by week two, it was miserable. I mean, like we had six episodes in the series and, and, and like the last five episodes, I didn't even want to go online. Really? I mean, like it was vicious <laughs> how bad, yeah. bad it was. So this Mike um, had written many, many horrible things that I saw online that he wrote to me, or not to me, but about me, on about Venom Hunters. 
And I shit you not, I was at Tinley, last vent Tinley I ever vended. And, and he walked up to me and he was like, bro, I love the show, man. You're doing great things. And I literally almost wanted to pull my phone out and pull up some of his comments I and wish. just say, this is you, right? This, yeah. this is your name and this is your comment, you piece of shit. You know what I mean? So, so my point is you really rarely meet a hater. You typically, you know, those you know, people even, change into lovers when they meet. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. It, but, but now I don't, you know, my point, I don't want to go on this big thing about hate or anything like that, but now I, I, I don't, I don't deal with that much hate every now and then, uh, you know, but I don't even care. And like I said, even when I do it, did it, I don't even care anymore. I'm like, whatever. I know I'm doing good things and I'm a good person and, 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 uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, not a bad guy. So, um, so it doesn't even bother me, but, but there was like that, like going to Tinley, you didn't know what was yep. to expect where, where you're going to be loved or were you going to be like, like hated Were the people that, that still are in that room that were still part of that world that still talk shit. And, and, and by the way, there's a handful of those people still hanging around that were vending the show that still talk shit about me. And I know they do. I, I don't like them. As a matter of fact, on the podcast, I've actually mentioned a couple of their names saying that I don't like them because I think they're assholes. Um, so I understand they don't like me. I don't like them because, and the only reason I don't like them is because they're assholes, you know? I, I, the reason they don't like me is I think they're jealous or whatever the case is. I'm, yeah, I've never done anything to them at all. But, um, but anyways, you know, they were in the room right now. I, it's a big room. I could avoid them. I'm not worried about it. Right. I, I could, uh, you know, and I didn't run into them at all. It, it, the, the ha just a very small handful of people that I really did not want to see. Uh, thankfully I didn't run into, um, but, but we were welcome with open arms and, sure. and we had a really good time. You know, obviously Brad, the kid that we, we kind of, <laughs> you know, adopted for the day. And you guys and, were like, this, dude. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we were like besties, man. Um, and we, you know, we, we bought him the gargoyle gecko and cage and stuff like that. Um, he had a great day. He, he was, he was super into it. It was a fun thing. It was a video that, that Jay and I have been talking about yeah. since he, he started working for me a yeah. few years ago. And, uh, so it was kind of cool to finally put that one to bed. Yeah. Um, and, not, and it was a great video. I yeah, loved it. It, it was, was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And we, and, and some people like, you know, I, I know there was like one, one, almost every comment was super positive. There's one comment like way to exploit a kid for money or for views or something <laughs> like so that. Stupid. And, and I told him, you know, what I responded to is like, bro, when the cameras were off, I still spent hours with the kid walking yep, around, you know, true. it wasn't like as soon as the camera's off, all right, Brad, get the hell out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my thing now. So, uh, so anyways, uh, you know, it wasn't, it was, it was as much about trying to make Brad and his family a really special day as it was trying to make a video that I really wanted to make too. Uh, so there were two two factions. Of and that, those both can exist at the same time. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's like you exactly. can make something that you really want to do and also give somebody an awesome time. Like it doesn't yeah. have to be separate. Yeah, I mean it's it's that whole thing. Like you know, and and I always think this. Like when you're doing a you know, philanthropic thing, you know, if, if you're, if you're, you know, like say Mr. Beast, you know, I'm planting a, you know, 20 million trees, you know, the fact that he does a video on it, does that make it less, um, impactful that he planted 20 million trees or when he, you know, does a, you know, like water to a village yeah. in Africa, you know, you know, pays for a well and then does a video about the well. I mean, does that make it like, oh, he's only doing it for the, the, the attention or is he really making a difference in the world? Yep. And, he, and it just so happens that as, as he puts it out there and, and makes money off of that video, he's able to do more of it. Well, that's you know my I mean? point. That's what I don't understand is like, yeah, you're making money off the video to pay for the well, <laughs> you right, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, who cares? Like, yeah. And, and yeah, and we, uh, and we lost money on that video with Brad, you know what I mean? Obviously what we spent on the gecko and in the cage, we didn't make that much on the video, you know? So, so we, we were losing money on, on the video. Yeah. It wasn't like, like, uh, I, we I was got like, $30,000 for giving Brad yeah, a gecko. It's yeah. like, it was mostly about making some kid yeah. super excited. Yeah, it was know? fun. It was fun. And like I said, that was just one, like I read most oh, of the 99, comments. Oh, 99.9. Yeah, and, and everyone was really, really good about and, it. And but. the thing is, yeah, I don't, never mind, it doesn't matter. But uh, you want to hit a couple supers yeah, real let's quick? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Tegu King says, you guys are the best leaving back to Arizona in two weeks from Orlando. Going to hit Gatorland before I go. Tell him we said hi. Yeah, you got to hit Gatorland. Actually, Lori's in Orlando right now. She's not at Gatorland, but she's in Orlando. <laughs> could you imagine if she so, was? Yeah, could you imagine? Yeah, she's at Disney today. If, you, if anyone's at Disney, 
Disney today. Uh, say hi to Lori if you see her. <laughs> She's gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then Heidi says, "Just sending you, uh, sending love to you and all in the chat room. Much love." Thank Heidi. you, Heidi. It's always good to talk to. We were chatting a little earlier online, uh, Heidi and myself, and she's hoping, you know, she wants to come to the states to either go to Tinley or Animal Con or hopefully both. Oh, that'd be um, cool. And obviously, I think that you know, for her, Tinley probably makes more sense. But I would certainly love to 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 you know have her come to Animal Con too. I'm, I'm really excited about Animal Con this year. We oh. have a, a lot going on. Um, it's it's going to be a a, a a much different event than than it was last yeah. year. A lot bigger, a lot more going on. I think a lot, you know, just just all in all, just going to be a, a a very successful event. Um, you know, we'll be launching a bunch of stuff about it, but just so you know, it is going to be in Orlando, uh, September 15th, 16th, 17th of next in 2023 at the Royal Caribbean, uh, same place that was last last year. Uh, it's going to be bigger. There's going to be more room uh, and a lot more things going on. A lot of moving parts. We're working really hard to make it a really successful event. So, uh, so we're super excited. And uh, I already started reaching out to some people uh, that were there. I've reached out to some people that weren't there that are going to come this next year. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll hopefully have the vast majority of the people that came last year as far as creators, and then probably add 50 or 60 additional creators beyond that. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about that opportunity, so uh, so stay tuned to that. Jimmy says, uh, and this was about the Twister comment, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. says, uh, I'm talking about the movie. Universal officially announced that a sequel is oh, in wow. development earlier this week. Helen Hunt is expected to return. Oh, How crazy okay. is that? Yeah, so Bill Paxton it was the, 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 the main guy, and then Helen Hunt was the... You know, it was just Billy Paxton, and, and which I was a huge Billy Paxton fan, by the way, mainly because of he was in Aliens, yeah, the, the yeah, sequel, yeah, yeah. The, the number two, which was called Aliens. He was, I think, the best character in that movie, uh, even better than Sigourney Weaver. And so, but he he had a heart attack and died at a relatively young age. I think what he was shame. only in his like mid to late fifties. Um, so, uh, but but yeah, Twister was a you know I, I you know it's it's that's. That's awesome. I'm I'm glad to hear that that movie will get remade because I, I love that. I, there's one every time. It's one of those movies that if I'm scrolling through the TV, which I hardly ever do, but if if I came across Twister, I'd watch it. Heck yeah! You know, like every time. There's only a handful of movies that no matter what, what I'm doing, I'll stop and watch. Um, and the Twister is one of them. So that's cool. I, I and now with the the special effects that they have, oh my God, I can only right? imagine how good it could potentially be. And then uh, Let Roses Burn says, I have a suggestion for someone uh, for Animal Con next year. Can I hit you up on Insta, Jay? Sure can. Please do. Please do. And, and I mean, we, we love all suggestions that you, you might have. Uh, uh, and we really look forward to seeing you at this this year's event. It, it's, like I know. I said, we missed you last time. So Yeah. And, and like I said, I'm telling you, it's going to be... Uh, a very different event in a good way, you yeah, know, it's a very so good, much fun. different event in a good way. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I, you know, just us having 12 months to work on it. Now we only have, you know, nine and a half months or what <laughs> left or 10 months left, I should say. Um, you know, it, you know, but, but we literally didn't even get started till five months before last right. time. And by the time we were really rolling, rolling, we only had about three months left. And now um, you have all the shortcuts. You already know a lot of the things yeah. you have to do and yeah. how they get done and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It'll be definitely be a much easier event to put on, um, the, the second time, yeah. you know, for sure. Although we're adding a lot of things that are going to make it a little more complicated, but it's going to be awesome and we can't, can't look for it. So Tinley was, like I said, was a really great event. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions in the supers, hit me up, please. I'm always happy to, to, to answer. You can ask me questions about anything you want. Um, but, uh, but the, the show went well, we, we did leave about, th I think about three 30 or so. So the show stopped at like five, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, so we didn't stay till the bitter end. And unfortunately we, we had, you know, we went to Aquashella the next day yep. and I was actually a, a speaker at that event, which is a fish, really big fish event. Uh, we've now been to Dallas, Orlando, and this one was in Chicago, uh, uh the, the Aquashellas. We've been making the and, rounds at Aquashellas. Yeah, done you know all three, uh, did all three Aquashellas this year and had a great time at all of them. And, um, so, uh, so we had to, there was a VIP party, uh, Saturday night at Aquashella. So we didn't get a chance to stick around. Uh, that being said, Jay, uh, and Mike were there as well with us and they, they ended up, uh, staying for the auction and <laughs> having a good time. And, and so it went, it went really well. So, uh, yeah, all in all, it was just a, a, a great, uh, event. Now the question is, you know, will I go back to Tinley? Um, I don't, you know, I, of course I will. Uh, do I think it's going to happen next year? Probably not. Um, 
do I think it could happen, you know, every two or three years? I think I could pop in. Sure. I think so. I think that's a possibility, but I don't think that I'll, I'll, um, go on, a, on the regular. It just, you know, it's, there's not a lot there for me, you know, like other than meeting people, which is great. I, I love to meet people, but hopefully people can meet me at animal con, you exactly. know, that, that, that's, exactly. you know, that's the event for it. And, um, and, uh, it, it, and other than that, you know, it, it's, it's cool to kind of, I didn't get a lot of time to like walk around and I, yeah, see feel stuff. You. We like really yeah. filmed. You yeah. met a, bu a bunch of people yeah. and then we like, we were done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think I only saw about 20% of the show, you know, because I, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, I was, yeah, yeah I'd walk five feet and be, be there for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> yep. and, and then when and, you um, were free, you, we were focusing on Brett. I, I, yeah. You know? Yeah. When we had a minute, it was like, let's film. And, and then, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty chaotic, yeah. but, but still very fun. I mean, still very fun. And, and, and I appreciate everyone that I did meet and I appreciate all the support that everyone made. I mean, it's, it's always going to make you feel special yeah. and, and, and humble you when you, you have that type of, uh, you know, kind of outpouring and stuff like that. So it was definitely a really cool, cool thing. And so uh, I'll be back, but I don't know exactly when. No, I feel that 100%. And then we got uh, Heidi yeah, said uh, with those dates, she could do both. So that would, that be, would awesome. be great. That'd be great. You know, that'd be great if you could do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because it is. It just depends on how long you, you stay in. But obviously, if you come, you know, please come and stay with us for a little bit and we can tool around and do anything. We can, you know, spend some time down in Florida. Yep. Um, I can, you know, we, we know all the people down there. We can go to all the people in Florida and stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. Of course, it's going to be an interesting time because, of course, that's going to also back up, you know, to, I was talking to Steve Bashy today, yeah. who's doing all the filtration and stuff like that for the the, the aquarium that we're working on. Um, and uh, he did say September first is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, he's yeah, like, yeah. he's like, I'm really worried about September first because I keep saying September first is when I want to have it. Realistically, this is the thing I've I've thought. Number one, you got to always set a deadline. Yeah, you know, and and that deadline keeps people motivated. Yeah, if, and even if, if just, it moves, it doesn't. At yeah, least there's a deadline. Yeah, you know, even when we opened up the original Reptarium, it moved almost a month from the time that we were going to do it to the time we actually did, and it really wasn't. From, you know, I, I was just talking to someone about this earlier. From the time the cages showed up at the first Reptarium 1.0 till the time we were open was 21 days. Right. 21 days we got it done. The problem was is from the time that I thought the cages were going to show up till when they actually showed up was about a month. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So it was Universal Rock kind of just, you know, they were supposed to ship at some point. They didn't get things done. They weren't ready. And, and, and it took them a, an extra month to get the cages done. And I know that now. So I'm going to be, and we have, now we have 10 months, right? When we started, when we did 1.0, we got, I mean, we were only probably four months from the time I started the project to the time we opened up was probably really? about four months. Um, of course, it was a much smaller place. There wasn't as much stuff to do. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, we were working literally like 18, 20 hour days yep. for that 21. That 21 days was like a, a marathon. And I, it was cool. I had a, a few people. Obviously, when the cages showed up, we had a bunch of people show up just like we did with 2.0. Uh, and, and several of those people stuck around, you yeah, know what I mean? They yeah. would come back every day and, and some people worked a job and at the end of their job, they'd come at night. And, you know, so I had a handful of people that like five o'clock would show up every day at five o'clock and then we'd work for five to like, you know, midnight every night. And of course I was here from the morning till midnight. Um, you know, but I, I had a lot of help. And then of course 2.0, uh, was even better because we had some really great help. Yeah. Some like, like skilled help. Yeah. Like, yeah. Car like carpenters and stuff like that, that literally stayed for like five six days but they were the best and, huh? and they, they'd show up at eight in the morning and work until eight or nine o'clock at night so we crushed the the, the 2.0 pretty quick but but i have 10 months now 10 11 months now uh to get going so the universal rock site i would like to start building probably in january actually um and, and, and even though we don't need it till the middle of summer you know right. uh that way i can really slowly work on these things may because i'll probably make you know just like we've done in the past you know go down for five days yep. come back for a while go down for five days come back for a while you know and, and we'll probably have to make three trips yeah. maybe even four trips down there um to to totally you know be done with um with, with with the things but i think that we could probably start taking uh delivery of those those uh cages maybe as early as early because yeah, we have an empty building right yeah we're <laughs> gonna have a building that'll be ready for them to go so so that's the other thing is we we did we weren't we couldn't even get the cages for 2.0 i mean we were like we finished the yeah. floors like three days before the cages yep. showed up so uh, and the walls were still getting done and, and inspections and all kinds of stuff like that so 
It's a great transition into so, your trip. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, right, exactly. So, so yeah, the, the transition is uh, my my trip that that Lori and I just took down to to uh, Texas. Uh, which, by the way, you guys will see tomorrow's vlog is the vlog uh, of of our trip. Um, it was it was it was a fun thing because it was more like you know. Uh, you know, it, it was more reminiscent of yeah. like my old vlogs that I used to do. Cause again, Jay, uh, was, wasn't feeling well. And, and so he, he, he stayed back and, uh, it was just me and Lori and, and, and my camera, you know, like old school, Super vlogs, dope. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and even the intro is a little, you know, Casey Neistat ish, you know, with like, you know, what, what we call continuation thoughts and, and, um, you know, where you're, you know, moving from one place to another and, and finishing you know, the same sentence, yeah, yeah. finishing the same sentence in a different spot and stuff like that stuff that I used to do in the vlog that we no longer do. So if you like the older vlogs, I think you'll like tomorrow's vlog. Yeah. And, it, and it was, what's interesting. It was five days in one vlog. So, so we visited five days worth of stuff in one vlog. And then the other thing, of course, is, is the first time that I flew since before COVID, um, and for whatever reason, and I've told people this, you know, a lot of people have heard this about me is that like, you know, I, I've, I haven't liked flying for a long time. Uh, I used to love flying when I was younger. And then, then I had kind of a, a bad experience with a flight, uh, back from Australia where it was just like not heavy turbulence, but very, uh, aware you were aware there was turbulence you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. like like you know your eyes were kind of bouncing and stuff like that you can't pretend nothing's happening but yeah. it, but it lasted for like six hours and 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 that's just a long time and i remember flying and, and when it started again i had liked flying at the time so i remember like the first hour it was like no big deal i was just watching trying to watch a movie it was a little bit annoying that i i was having a hard time concentrating on the movie because it was like so bouncy and then hour two, you start getting like, what the hell is going on, man? Why are we still bouncing like this? By the time you're into hour four, you're like in almost full grown panic mode. Like, what the hell is going on? When is this going to stop? You know, and we still had like five hours left in the flight. So you're thinking like, holy crap, you know, and I don't know what the weather, I don't know if there was like a, a, a cyclone in, in, in the Pacific at the time or what we were flying over, but it was pretty bad. But it was that kind of really ruined me for flying after that. And, and don't get me wrong, after that, I flew all around the world. I mean, I flew thousands, you know, not thousands, hundreds of times. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, after that trip, I went to Australia three more times. Right, you know? right. I went to Africa. I went to Japan. I went to China. I went Indo. to Th Indonesia. I went to, you know, all over the place. Uh, all, you know, California making, yeah, dozens yeah, of times. California yeah. dozens of times and, and Florida, Florida and all kinds of other places. Uh, so, so it wasn't like it stopped me. But when COVID happened, um, of course, you know, I stopped flying because of COVID and, and I didn't like the idea of, I, you know, I'm already uncomfortable on a plane and having to wear a mask and being uncomfortable on a plane sounded even more horrible. So like during the mask era, I was like, I'm not flying. There's no way. And then there was actually two times I, I was kind of booked. As a matter of fact, one, I booked a flight and then canceled it before I flew because I chickened out. And so uh, it was funny because it was just Lori and I that flew yeah. down to Texas. And she said, even when we were at the airport, she said, I thought for sure you were going to cancel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, said, yeah. I, I'm really surprised that we're sitting at the airport right now. And uh, so I got on a plane and and, and I, I knew I, hey, listen, there was always going to be a time I had to get on a plane. Yeah. Right. I mean, it was going to be either this time or something in six months or a year, or th three years. I'm not going the rest of my life not flying because there are places I want to go yeah. like Africa and Australia that we're going this year that I have to get on a plane to go to. Right. I can't I can't, can't I can't drive yeah. or I'm not taking a, a six day boat ride, which would be way worse, worse, by the way, way worse, way worse because I hate boats worse than I hate planes. So I had to just, you know, kind of bust it and, and do it. And, um, super and so, proud so of you, I by did. The way. So, so I did. And Not it was easy. a little bit stressful because of course, you know, d yeah, I, yeah. Listen, you know, I, I am, uh, you know, I'm the worst when it comes to stuff. <laughs> You're also I, have you a know. hyper mind. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. I'm always thinking. So, so of course I knew there were, were thunderstorms in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. You know, I knew there were thunderstorms in Texas in some severe thunderstorms in Texas that were hitting right when we were going to land, you know? And, uh, well, they were not only, they were a couple hours before we we're landing and a couple hours after we we're landing that whole swatch was, uh, was um uh thunderstorms and and for anyone that flies you know flying in thunderstorms isn't isn't very nice you know and so sure enough you know that that uh and sure you know sure enough we got on the plane the by the way we had a two-hour delay um which actually helped us a little bit to be honest with you because it was the end of the thunderstorms 
because we had a two hour delay. Uh, if we would have flown two hours earlier, we'd have been smack dab in the middle of the worst thunderstorms. And even the pilot said that he said, he goes, the good news is, you know, we're a couple. And by the way, do you know why we were two hours late? No, I've never had this happen. I've flown hundreds. Meaning you're, you're a two hour delay, right? Like two hour delay. The pilot didn't show up. Stop. They didn't have a pilot. That's so post COVID. It's not the even funny, right? The pilot didn't show up. I've Literally, never they even make heard the announcement. Of that. They're like, we're really not sure where the pilot is. We're trying to find him. And then, like, <laughs> they de- delayed like forty five minutes. And then they came back and said, "Well, we're we're getting another pilot." I've actually and, didn't and, even know that was a possibility. I've never heard of it before. Right? It seems pilot, like they should be forced. Like the through pilot gunpoint. literally did not show up. You wow! Know? So it's the first time that's ever happened to me. I don't know if it's that's the younger a, generation. Yeah, I don't know if that's is, a dude. new thing now or whatever. But but anyway, so. Um, um, so sure enough, the pilot said, hey, the good news is, is that there's the storms are dissipating a little bit. He said, but unfortunately, you know, the last 20, 30 minutes of the flight's going to get pretty bumpy. And I'm going to have and I always hate when pilots say this there. I say, I'm going to have the, the the flight attendants, you know, strap in. And, and, You're and, like, and, and like, oh, Jesus. So now I've got a two and a half hour flight. What am I thinking about the whole two and a half hours? Right. I'm thinking about the last 20 minutes. Right. You know, yeah. How bad is this going to be? And how bad is that? And, it, you know, it got bumpy. It really did. It got bumpy. But it wasn't like. You know, I mean, I've been through worse and I've been through this a uh, uh, thousand times. So, so like I made it and, and it did feel really good to, yeah. to, uh, achieve that. That doesn't mean that I'm like ready to, you know, like start flying every other week and I'm, I'm not going to be stressed because I'm still going to probably hate flying, but, but, uh, but I, I at least know I, now I can get on a plane and I'm not going to lose my mind. And, right. And, um, and, and, and have so, like a yeah. fucking panic attack or something, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's nice that you can at least make it through, even if it was not great. Yeah. Right, right, exactly, you know, and so, so, I mean, as a matter of fact, we, I don't even, I told you, we're, uh, <laughs> I haven't told Jay yet this, but uh, <laughs> he's finding out when you're finding out, um, you know, I, I we're probably going to go to LA in a few weeks. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I know you want to go out to LA. I want to go out to LA. So, um, uh, yeah, ironically enough, Howie Mandel asked me to be on his podcast. <laughs> Yo, yes, so, dude. um, so, you know, I mean, you know, and, and I've, I've, I've worked with Howie one other time. Uh, great, 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 great guy. Um, and so, uh, the 15th of December is, is the podcast I'm doing with okay. Howie. So, Sounds great. Dude. So I got to decide, you know, if I'm going early or later, you know, like, am I getting there on the 15th and then staying a few days or a week or five days or, 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 versa, or am right. I coming in early and leaving? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, damn, that's awesome. So, That'd be so, so yeah. sweet. So, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, Lori laughed because she's like, you haven't flown in three years, and now, you know, three weeks after your first flight, you're going to fly out to L.A. That, that's a like, good pattern. I'm like, that's, that's what, it, you know, that's how yeah. it goes, you know. But, uh, but so Dallas was really good. By the way, let's hit the super. Then sure. We can, we can... Gabriel says, wondering if you have any tips on raising my new panther chameleon that may not be so obvious. Thank you and love you so much. Really, with panthers, it's, it's about humidity. Setup um, is everything. Yeah, setup is everything. You know, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, a good mister, uh, you have, um, you know, the right, right, uh, you know, cage set up uh, with, you know, heat and everything else. It's pretty simple. I think the biggest thing that does happen to, to chameleons that don't do well is, uh, is dehydration. Yeah. You know, so they need a lot keep, more water than you'd think. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I would, I would reach out to like, you know, Fram's cams is, is really, really good. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't got a panther chameleon yet, get one from Fram's cams. Uh, they've got great animals and they're also really nice people and they're always willing to help answer any questions. And, and if I sat here and said that I was a chameleon expert, I'd be lying to you. Uh, I, I keep, keep them. I've kept them for years, but, um, but you know, they would know a lot more than I would when it comes to, to that. So, so definitely reach out to Fram's cams, regardless if you've already gotten one, I'm sure they would give you some information. If you haven't gotten one, uh, I would suggest getting them from them because they're great people. And Gabriel, I'll also go back and watch that podcast where we did a podcast with Fram's cams. So look for that one. And, uh, they had a lot of great info on that podcast too. So you can learn a lot from them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 it was, it was a lot of fun. Keep them supers uh, coming. Yeah. Yeah. If more supers, the better. Uh, we, we got to, we got, we got to come up with $3 million here, people. <laughs> really quick. Yeah. Like really we got to come up with $3 million. We got 10 months. It's, yeah. We got 10 months to, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, the expansion. So the trip to ta- Texas was all about the you know, aquariums, you know, and, and, and for those of you guys that, that, you know, just so you guys know, it's like, I'm not, you know, dissing reptiles and I'm not going to get rid of reptiles and I'm not going to not be a reptile guy. I will always be a bigger reptile guy than fish guy. you right. But I do love fish. I really do. And, and, and my love of fish that I have had since I was young has um, blossomed, it has blossomed a lot yeah. more. And, and I think it's, as a matter of fact, what, what's been really interesting is Lori 
So two things that are interesting, I think that's happened with Lori is that she's, I think, more excited about the aquarium than I am, yeah. which is really interesting. And she even said that when we were in Dallas, she said, you know, I kind of forgot how much I love fish. She's yeah. like, I just love fish. They're so cool, you know. And then the second thing, and this was the thing, I think I might have told you this earlier, Jay. Yeah. But uh, she said, I could see us opening up more aquariums down the road. I love that. You yeah. know, and that's crazy <laughs> that's to hear Lori so be like, think like, like what you, this, you want to do more things. We haven't even, we haven't even started this one and you're already thinking about doing more. Hell it's yeah. like, that's the way I am. That's the way I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I, by the time I'm done you're rubbing off on her a little thing, bit, she's you know, buying so, all these um, animals at Tinley. She wants yeah, to build yeah, more yeah. aquariums. What's going on over at the boat? But, uh, house? but you know, I, I think that, you know, so, so the trip there, you got to remember the reason why we're so fish centric right now with a lot of things that we're doing is that I'm learning, right? Yeah. You know I mean? Like, like I, I always can learn more about reptiles, you know, the ones I keep, the ones I don't keep. But digging for that um, info and sifting for the one you don't, the info you don't know is way more difficult because you yeah. have such a grasp on it. Yeah. I know? mean, yeah. Every reptile, at least I have a, a general understanding of what to do. Right. You know I mean? Whether, whether I'm a hundred percent like, oh yeah, I know I, this, I got this. You know, like I, I, I hardly, I can't remember the last reptile I've gotten. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm always nervous getting a reptile like our albino alligator right now. The baby, you know, hasn't eaten yet. You know, it's an alligator. It's going to eat. I'm sure it's going to be fine. But, uh, but you know, it's always stressful until it starts eating, right? Um, so there's always that. But there's never a reptile I get that I feel like I'm out of the water where I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm always like, all right, I can figure this out. We're going to, you know, figure this out. Um, so, um but with fish, it's a different thing, right? It's like I, I'm learning, you know, I, I've Everything. been, yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah. Like I've been around fish and I used to keep a ton of t aquariums when I was younger and stuff like that. But like that's been a lot of years, number one. And, you know, filtration has changed. Not to mention when you're doing, you know, 5,000 and, and 10,000 gallon aquariums, uh, they're very different than a little fish bowl, you yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot different as far as its needs and its its everything. So so I'm learning all this stuff. So we went down to Texas to we went to uh, we started with the the children's aquarium in um, in Dallas. Dallas, which was at the Dallas Fairgrounds. Which, by the way, the Dallas Fair was going on, which was pretty cool because we went to the aquarium, met with the owner. Uh, he gave us behind the scenes, talked a lot. Great guy named Chris. Um, and then, uh, and then we, we got to walk around the fair for a half hour or an hour That's or so, awesome. which was really dope. Cause I haven't been to a state fair. In, in, I don't think know, I've ever been to a state maybe fair. Maybe when I was like super young, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think, I think there is a Detroit state fair. We should uh, go. But, but I think that people get stabbed there all the time. We shouldn't like, go. Yeah. It's like, a, <laughs> yeah, it's like in, in not in a great area of town. Um, <laughs> That's so, I think but, I've actually, I think Noah's told me about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, it's like, yeah. I mean like every year people get stabbed. That's I mean, like awesome, it's, it's dude. very common. Like it's, Murder you know, man. yeah. And uh, so, so I haven't been to that since I was young, but uh, <laughs> uh, so that was kind of cool. And then we uh, went to Sequest. Uh, which we, you know, Jay and I yep. have been already, but Lori hadn't been. So I wanted to show her the, the Fort Worth Sequest uh, and just get ideas about aquariums and stuff like that. We we ended up talking with the management there and, and, and had a great time, you know, just learning about stuff there. And we, Jay and I had already learned a lot, but yes. Lori, you know, was involved in that. Then, um, then we ended up uh, meeting with uh, uh, the, the Roger, the owner of the fish gallery. He has uh, a beautiful store in Dallas and then two beautiful stores in Houston. Um, and he's a guy that I'm going to be buying some big tanks from, you yeah. know, some big used tanks. Uh, that'll be refurbished. They'll look brand new and stuff like that, but, but they are used. And that's the thing that's nice about giant exhibits, right? Is that like, let's say, uh, whether it's an aquarium or a, a, a school or a, you know, whatever that has a giant fish tank and they decide they want to get rid of it. Well, you know, it usually goes to a, a place that it kind of dies, you know what yeah, I mean? It like, sits in a warehouse Yeah, it sits forever. in a warehouse for years and years. Cause let's face it, when you're talking about an, you know, an eight foot cylinder tank, that's eight foot tall. Not that's a lot not, of customers, That's right? not going in someone's house. You know what I mean? It's unless you're going to take a wall out, you know, right. um, it's just not going to happen. So, so we, we ended up meeting with him, uh, saw a bunch of tanks that that we're most likely going to buy. Um, talked to him a bunch. He's a really great guy and a really, uh, you know, really gave us a lot of information. Uh, and then we toured the the fish gallery in Dallas, which was really cool. Um, and then we went uh, from there. We we drove to Houston, 
And I think I'm missing it. Dallas oh World. yeah, we did. I did Dallas World Aquarium as well. And as Jay and I have been. I've been a handful of times to Dallas World. It's one of my favorite aquariums in the country. Although it's not so much an aquarium, it's more like a zoo. It's it, a zoo it's aquarium. Like an in, it's like an yeah. indoor zoo. As a matter of fact, it was funny because Lori said she's like, "Is that all the fish that's in here?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then while we were in the gift shop, because uh, Lori's always scouts the gift shop wherever we go, uh, an older lady was like. I'm not sure why they call this an aquarium, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of true because it's not really an aquarium as you would think. It's it's all these ex it's birds, it's reptiles, it's it's mammals. You know, they've got sloths and three toed sloths and two toed sloths and 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 you know all kinds of. It all just come, came from like the the namesake. I think comes from that that restaurant, right? Because it was yeah. the restaurant with the fish, then became an aquarium, then he yeah. built up, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's probably build, what yeah. the name probably came, yeah. and then the zoo changed. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely more of a you know. There's more birds by far than there oh, are fish sure. um and wild birds too. yeah, yeah. Like and, and it's really it's really cool i mean really cool stuff but uh, uh but i wanted Lori to see that and, yeah. th and then we headed out to houston and we um uh hit another fish gallery, yeah we hit right? two fish galleries actually two yes. fish galleries in houston uh saw a couple more tanks that we wanted to buy in houston that we went and scouted and then we went to the uh down it's called the downtown aquarium in in houston and uh obviously downtown and and it was really cool i mean it was really good they had tigers there of all things you, you got, again nuts. if you watch the 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 the, the, the vlog tomorrow you, you guys will see it it looks know? so cool uh, but but yeah it was it was a really interesting trip uh, i will say this by time i left like and then we met with a theming company as well that does theming um for for big aquariums and in other zoos and stuff like that um you know for stuff like you know coral inserts and 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 theming of rocks and stuff like that although we use universal rock they do a little bit different stuff too so we'll probably use both uh but nevertheless it was uh it was definitely a very interesting trip uh but my head hurt at by the end i mean five days of of just constantly being bombarded with information that you kind of understand but aren't masterful of it. You know what I mean? It was like, you almost leave with more questions than you came with. You know? Yeah, it was, it was overwhelming. It really was. I mean, and, and, and not just overwhelming with what people told us, but also what we saw, you know, I mean, you see all these aquariums and these ideas and, and uh, it, it becomes really overwhelming. And, and then you start, you know, kind of applying that to what you think you're going to do with our expansion. And uh, it, wow, it just becomes like crazy to think, all the things that that we need to do and, and need to uh, achieve you know and i guess it's that like that old saying how do you eat an elephant you know one bite at a time yeah exactly um i mean i think that's the way it's going to be is we're just going to have to slowly you know build this out and, and as we come across problems we're going to have to learn the problem it's kind of like you know i built some people don't know this i built my house you know 20 years right. ago with literally with the hammer and nails you know i didn't like hire people to build it i built my house and i used to always tell people that like i would wake up in the morning every single morning and there wasn't you know the youtube wasn't around at that time right, so right. so like you know i would go to home depot and i would ask the people how do you install a fireplace yeah, I mean, so literally, that, like, every day I would I'd go be like, OK, today I've got to install this. I don't know how to do it. I better go ask somebody. Yeah. And I would go to either Home Depot or some other place or whatever. And I'd be like, hey, I've got this problem. I got to do this. What should I do? And then I would come and like, you know, how do you install a staircase? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you know, I'd have to learn how to install a staircase. You yeah, know? Yeah. And I think that's going to be the same thing with the aquarium is it's going to be like, OK. And don't get me wrong. We've got a great team. We've got Steve Bashy on the team. Roger is, is willing to help. Chris is willing to help the guy from the children aquarium we've got other people that are pitching in um you know so we have a, a really good team of people that understand things way more than i do as a matter of fact i talked with steve uh and steve is an interesting guy because he's a very dynamic funny quirky dude i uh, love steve you know, so much by the way yeah he's just a great yeah. he's just a great great guy and uh and I, I told him this because obviously he's going to be involved in, he, I mean, heavily involved in uh, in the aquarium. You know, I mean, he, like from day one till till forever. And, uh, and and I told him, I said, you know, listen, when it comes to the online world, I want to learn as much as I can so I can be, you know, using knowledge to help people in the fish world, just like in the reptile world. I want to be as comfortable talking about fish and filtration and everything as I am talking about reptiles now. But I'm not there, right? I'm not right. there yet with that. So, um, so, so I told him. I said, you know, I want to win over the fish world too, because I listen. I want the reptile world to continue watching because we'll always have reptiles, and I want the fish world to start watching because there's something new and interesting, and we're going to be doing something that 
you know, and most fish yeah. channels aren't doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I mean, like literally, we're building a a freaking mi- multi million dollar <laughs> aquarium. aquarium. It's you know what I mean? So it's sick. like you know, with giant exhibits in it and uh, in, in amazing uh, experiences. So I, I I hope that the fish community embraces me. I don't know. So I've been to Aquashella three times. What the three times I've been there almost everyone is like open arms, you know, welcoming. And they seem to be, uh, it's, I mean, you tell me, Jay, it seems like just a much more welcoming community. Yeah. It doesn't um, seem as vitriolic. I haven't heard anyone really talk trash about anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Where like you yeah. go, you go to anywhere reptiles and immediately within three conversations, you're hearing like, did you hear what this person did? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like there, it's a different vibe. So I'm hoping that the fish world will not, um, be like, oh, that reptile guy yeah, yeah, getting yeah. in the fish world now. Yeah. You know, almost like the Venom people did to me yeah. on Venom Hunters. You know what I mean? Like, I, I hope that that doesn't happen, and I hope that I can become part of that community as much as I'm a part of the reptile community. You know, and um, I think the the thing that will happen because uh, uh, it is a little different is like. With the reptile community, even with the venomous stuff, they look at it as like, oh, he's coming in to take money out of our pockets, right? right. I want to be the venom guy. Right. I want to sell ball pythons, you know? Right. We're not selling fish. No, so that's like, true. So yeah. we're so disconnected. We're just a, pl- you know what I mean? We're an aquarium in Metro I guess Detroit. The, I guess the only thing that I worry about, and again, I'm just saying, you know, I don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah, this please. is happening, is that... Um, you know, could could like let's say a fish channel be like, oh, he's stealing my views now. You know, mm. people are gonna watch him instead of me, which is completely not true, by the way. When it goes to like reptile people are like that sometimes too, right? Like, listen, you can watch Chandler and you can watch Kevin and you can watch Tyler and you can watch me and you can watch Snake Discovery yeah. and you can watch you know Gatorland. I bet you most of the people Dingo. on the channel do. Yeah and, yeah, and you can watch everybody. You know, it's not like like if I'm getting views, Dingo's not getting views. It's like we can both get views and, and it's we can fine, help you know? each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I still you know. I've been, you know, I was talking to the other Jay, um, the edutainer, uh, t- yesterday about it. You know, it's like I still have this, like, this, this dream that I hope one day will become a reality when we have this, like, this group of people, you know, I, I envision again, I, I don't know who I envision Savannah and I envision Dingo and, and I envision, you know, maybe Tarzan and, 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 you know, I don't want to alienate anyone. So I'll stop there, but I envision a lot of group of people that we somehow come together and, and kind of like sidemen it, right? Yep. Like the sidemen with KSI yep. um, or the vlog squad with David Dobrik. You know, I really believe if you, you put a group of people together that are really dynamic, that all have different things to offer like dingo has something different than i have and right. savannah has something different than me and dingo and and tarzan has something different than all of us and 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 will nace and, and you know whoever the people are i think if you put six or eight people together and consistently tried to work together you know and that would mean like hey listen with like dingo would be hard because he's in south africa but we would have to make a concerted effort to to to, to go to places together right whether we're going to south africa he's coming to america we're going somewhere else together to do it Right. like Indonesia or Australia, but really make a concerted effort to, to have like all six or eight people at least four or five times a year be in one spot together yep. and make amazing videos. And then but beyond that, three here, sh- two here, right, exactly. One, yeah. yeah. Breaking into little groups and then also sharing each other's stuff. I think, you know, all, all ships rise with the tide. Yeah. A conglomerate of yeah. creators would be awesome. And I, I still, I, I, it's still been a dream of mine for years. I've been talking about this for probably six or seven years now. Um, and I realized that, you know, this is the thing. It's like, you know, if you're a small channel, of course you want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're a relatively big channel and I want that, you know, yeah. I, I, I would say, you know, the majority of people that would be under in, in, in this, this group, uh, would, would probably have much less following than I have. But I don't care about that because I want their following to become as big as my following and then maybe bigger than my following. And maybe when their following gets bigger than my following, my following can grow to their level, you yep. know, and so on like that. So I think that what my point is, is that I, I fears me, it scares me a little bit that the fish community might have a little bit of this like, oh, you know, Brian's coming in and trying to steal our our thunder because he's, you know, building a giant aquarium instead of just a little, you know, gallery. Maybe, in maybe let's try to make like, like a uh, like a concerned effort to like 
you know, collab with people yeah. as we're doing things, yeah. having people come out and helping with different steps or whatever it is yeah. so that people feel included and don't feel like, oh, he's trying to come. You know what I mean? Yeah, that no, might be I, something cool. Yeah, yeah. And I think we will do that for sure. You know, there's no doubt about that. Let's hit a couple super. Sure. Down. Katie did says Lori loves dogs and fish just as much as Brian loves reptiles. That is true. That is true. She do love dogs and fishies. Yeah. Um, and then we got Leptrocious says two things. First, those new tanks at Big Riches were absolutely awesome. Second, yeah. Paul Caffaro finally got his Fly River Turtle he's been waiting for. That's awesome. I, I, saw, yeah, I saw that Paul got that, and yes, the, the big tanks at Riches are, are amazing. Um, really cool tanks, you know, and, and we, we <laughs> actually, we're actually going to get a couple tanks um, almost exactly identical to a little bit, a little bit bigger. You know, uh, his are four foot tall. The ones we're getting are five foot tall. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, just just a little bit more water, but it's 20 foot long, just like that. So so, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it, those are those are impressive tanks for sure. I love them. Maria says, hey, Brian, how's the grandson doing? Uh, he's in Florida. He's actually thank you for asking, Maria. He's in Florida. He had his first flight yesterday. Uh, for, the reports were that he did very well on the plane. Um, he wasn't screaming or anything like that. He did really good. And, uh, I saw a couple pictures earlier. They're at magic kingdom at Disney okay. right now. So Lori and Jade and, uh, our, our cousin crystal get together every year. Um, this time of year, they were, they actually were supposed to be there for their hurricane, um, <laughs> in, in the hurricane, you know, shut everything down, obviously. So they were supposed to be there a month or so ago. And the, the, they had to push it off. But it was actually probably way better. And I told Lori this. I said, they always usually go in September, yeah. which, you know, obviously the chance of a hurricane happening are, are not very big, you know, but it did happen this year. But uh, uh, but the weather is always, and, you know, really all the summer months all the way till September, it's, so rainy. Ra it's raining almost every single day. When you get into like late October, November, it, it's almost never raining. And, and the weather, out, yeah, the yeah. weather, they, it's like that's the perfect time of year in Florida is usually like, November, December, yep. or end of October, November, December, and then it gets a little cold sometimes, and 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 then, uh, but those those there's that window, and I've been to Florida so many times, a hundred times probably, <laughs> almost never in and, that window, right? and, and I've only been to that in that window once or twice, and it's been the it, the, the humidity oh, is gone, yep. it's just beautiful weather down there, so that's why I told her I said you should really start, you know, trying for this trying time of for year. this time of year instead of September. So anyways, they're having a great time. The weather, again, is low 70s, uh, mid-70s. Mid so no, it's like here. You know, sunny, no no, uh, no humidity. Uh, so Nathan is down at Magic Kingdom. Listen, he's 10 months old. He's not going to remember Magic Kingdom. But, you, but they will. But, uh, but they will, and the, he'll see the pictures of the first Disney trip. And the fact that Lori is such a huge Disney fan, and my daughter is such a huge Disney fan. Well, our whole, our whole family is really huge Disney fans. Um uh, it's, it's, it's cool to, to, uh, uh, to, to have the first trip yeah. with her grandson, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so I wish I was there, but it's always a girl's trip. Well, I guess now there's a boy involved, but, um, <laughs> he's but, a little man. but, but it is, a, it is a girl's trip and I'm not invited. So, uh, but he's doing great and he's, he's getting pretty mobile now and, uh, he's, he's awesome. So thanks for asking. And then, uh, Rebecca King says, hello, Brian and Jay. First live I've caught since my mom passed away in July. Just so watched, sorry. uh, the video of you at Ohio fish rescue. Sorry for oh, your loss. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Rebecca. I know that's very difficult. Uh, I, uh, um, yeah, I've lost a couple of parents myself, so I know how that is. So thoughts with you and, and, uh, glad that you're back and I'm, I'm hoping things, you know, get better for you. I mean, that's, it's a, it's a rough one, man. It's never easy. I tell you, that's, no, there's no doubt not. about that, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, you know, again, you know, the the trip was was really fruitful. Met a lot of really good people. Um, you know, I, I I told Jay that I I you know I'm, I remember how I like the third part of this expansion was you know growing the reptiles a little bit, you know, doing the fish, and then originally I wanted to do like a mining, you know, like a yeah. dig site as I called them. Well, we aren't going to be able to do that, obviously, just because it's just not in the cards for this one. But one of the things that that I, I came across a couple of places that I've been is actually where you can do the sifting for gems and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And uh, so, so we fun. found the company that actually makes those uh, through one of the aquariums. He gave wow. me the contact info. And it's, I just somehow have to squeeze it in. Yeah. I don't know where it's going. I have no idea what's going to happen, but somehow I have to squeeze that, 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 that experience in, in yeah. because I just think it's really, really cool for kids and adults. And it was funny because when we were at the one aquarium, the guy told me that more adults do it than kids. hundred percent. And he's like, 100%. And, and, and I guess there's like, you know, the, the, so you buy a bag of dirt, right? 
or sand actually. Yeah. And, and in that sand, there's different things. Like the one's like ten bucks, and there's like some rocks in there. Well, I don't even know what the hell's in there. <laughs> and then it's twenty bucks, and then it's thirty bucks, and then the sixty dollar one has like nice, like not like some chunks of but, crystals, but yeah, like stuff, crystals yeah. and gems and stuff like that. And and he told me, he goes, Brian, he goes, you don't you don't understand how many sixty dollar bags of sand we sell every single day. Uh-huh. He's like, and it, you know, these adults want you know, all those gemstone girls, yeah, bro. Yeah, they yeah. out there, bro. And uh, so it's 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 uh, and it's not about the money. I mean, it, you know, of course no, that that helps. I mean, it's he, giving the experience. It's it's, it's, it's not cheap to ma- get one made because they look like like a, a water tower, and then they drain down, and they you know yeah. you can sift through and stuff like that. And um, they're they're expensive. You know, they're like thirty grand. Yeah. But uh, but it, on the money side of things, he had told me he goes, Brian. He goes, we'll probably triple our money the first year. Oh, that's awesome! You know, and, and you know, it's like you just think like, on rocks. How, how can you make that much money on sand? Selling people oh. sand, you know. But uh, it's um, the experience, man. Yeah, but the it, treasure hunt. That to me is is it, that's what it is. It's like everything is. Listen, I've got to financially be able to to, to make sense of this all, right? right? You know, I mean, I'm basically spending everything I could possibly come up with to do this. And, and off the uh, rip, just making an aquarium aquarium, like a mm-hmm, typical thing, mm-hmm. isn't going to bring you any extra dollars other than people through the door. Yeah, you know just through I mean? the door, right, exactly. Although we will have experiences in the aquarium. Much we like will. The, yeah, we, most aquariums don't. That's what I mean. Like, if you did yeah. a normal aquarium expansion, you wouldn't be making anything but more people through the door. Right, you know? exactly. So but, you know, the experiences ways. that we're, we get, we'll, we'll be able to make extra money because of those experiences. Those experiences will be, you know, feeding predator fish like Arapaima, of course, if you, you know, uh, Rebecca said she watched the Ohio Fish Rescue. I was so excited and ecstatic. I, I wish I could take this fish home right now. I mean, there's a vlog course, house. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a vlog. <laughs> I've been thinking yeah, about yeah, that yeah. so much. You put that Arapaima in the basement. In that big pond, yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's wild looking. It's so pretty too, dude. It's so, so beautiful. And it's, you know, four, four and a half foot. It's going to one day get eight foot. I mean, and, and I want to get three of them. I want to have three arapaima. So, so Rip, Big Rich and, and, and Josh said that they were going to be on the lookout for other arapaima. Uh, so that they, they said, yeah, by, by time we, summer comes around, we'll have three for you. And, and so that's going to be super cool. So, you know, you'll be able to feed the predator fish. You'll obviously be able to feed, you know, several other tanks where you could just feed fish food to. Archer fish. Uh, yeah, we'll have an archer fish target. Uh, so for you guys that don't know who what archer fish are, they're fish that actually spit water to knock bugs out of the Accurately, air. Accurately, like a super spitting accurate. cobra or something, you know? Super accurate. They can, they can literally spit like 10 feet a, a fly in the air. It's insane. And, and, and the fly will fall in, and then they eat the fly. And uh, but you can target train them uh, just like we do with the monitors to like g- spit at a red ball, you know. So basically, what you do is so you take cool. a red ball on the end of a stick and you dip it in the water, and then you get some fish food on it, and they'll spit the fish food off the off the the thing. And of course, what's fun about that is when they're spitting it, it's it's hitting you, and you know, as it hits so the ball, cute. and then it shatters everywhere, and you're getting all wet from this fish spitting, and it's just a cool experience. There'll be that experience. Obviously, there'll be the stingray swimming with experience. There'll be a koi fish. You know, uh, where you can feed koi fish. Uh, there'll be touch tanks, which, you know, will or, you know, that's not going to cost money, but, but, uh, but you could feed stingrays. So you could swim with stingrays or you could feed stingrays. Right. And you'll be able to feed stingrays in both the touch stingray tank and the, the swimming, the, the, one, right? the swimming stingray tank. Um, so, so we'll have experiences that you can do at, at the aquarium that you can't do, you know, not to mention all the reptile stuff will still be there. Uh, obviously, most of that's free handling and all that type of stuff. And then we're going to add a few uh, an- mammals as well. So, um, so uh, that, you know, you, you got to still make it. Listen, when you're spending millions and millions of dollars, uh, you, you have to financially make that money back. You can't just like go, oh, I'll spend the money and I don't have to make it <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah. You got to strategically think like how financially is this going to work? You know, now is it, is it, you know, I mean, I hope it will be a financially super successful business, um, but it's not really about that. You know, I mean, it's about, you know, I just don't want to go under, you know, I don't want to spend all my money and, and then have it go out, out, out of business of course. In, in three years, you know, so, um, so we're going to do the best we can do, but I think it's going to go well and it's going to be pretty exciting. And I hope that you guys are going to enjoy the experience of, of, you know, the journey, t- yeah. t- 10 months of, I mean, you know, I'm going to take you guys on the nitty gritty and, I, and, and, and it'll be interesting because, you know, you know, we vlog differently now than we did say six eight months ago yeah i think that a lot of the vlogs that we start doing again 
will be a little bit different again. You know, it's going to be more re- reality, more real life, yep. more builds, more uh, how how you're you know emotionally feeling through it, um, physically feeling through it, taking you guys on the the real journey. Right, is I want you guys to feel like you're a part of this build. Uh, Ten months, millions of dollars putting it all on the line, you know, I mean, like literally risking everything that I have. It's a great intro. Um, and, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> that really is. Dude. Yeah, that's yeah. a good intro. <laughs> yeah. And, Got me uh, emotional. and, and so, so that's going to be, um, probably what the vlogs are going to be like for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not going to all be builds. We're going to still come back to the Reptarium. The Reptarium is going to be open. Remember the Reptarium is going to be open literally the entire time we build. So we're still going to be here. We're still going to be working with animals. We're still going to break away. We're still going to do all our, you know, breeding and all the other stuff that we do. Uh, so it's not like all of a sudden it's just like 10 months of nothing but building the aquarium. But, but that will be heavily weighted in that way. Cause yeah. you got to remember, I'm not going to have time to, to come and film for three or four hours uh, over at the Reptarium every day because I, I'm going to be working probably from 8 in the morning till 10, 11 o'clock at night every night over at the other place building. So, like, there's there'll be, I mean, the days I can break away, we're going to come and do some stuff here. Yeah. But but many days I'm not going to be able to break away, so the only thing we could do is film what I'm doing, yeah. right? And, uh, and I'll uh, film some stuff with the crew here so yeah, that we yeah, can, yeah. can kind of blend some stuff. You guys can keep up with what's going on. But for the most yeah. part, yeah, it's going to be, because I'll be right next to Brian for the whole thing. So Yeah, and so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Hopefully you guys will love seeing it come to life. And, there were some of my you know, favorite videos we've ever filmed was building 2.0 out, and I think that people also love love them so i think yeah. it's gonna be i mean you think team 2.0 was crazy this is next level <laughs> like yeah oh this is like i mean it's not even so crazy know, I mean, don't get me wrong it, it costs a lot of money to do 2.0 and it was a big feat but uh but this is like dwarfs anything that we've ever done in our entire life and and there will i i've said this uh, uh, you know to people there will be many days over the course of the next 10 11 months that i will be cursing my name for for doing this yep. i'll be like what the hell was i thinking you know i'm an idiot i should have never started this but i i i, I don't think that, i shouldn't say it. i don't think there'll be many days no i don't think, I think so. there'll be some days a few days where it feels like overwhelming i think the majority of those days i'm going to really enjoy and i'm going to enjoy seeing a vision so so interestingly enough when we we originally you know uh, you know and jay knows this like 2.0 is a perfect example. Like I visualized 2.0. Now, now does everything look exactly like I thought? No. Like when we took that wall out, Jay was yeah. standing right with me. It felt more than I thought. Like yeah. it, it was like I, I had an envision standing like where our gift shop is now and looking to Lucy's cage. And how far away and, it and felt. How f- far away it felt when we were used to being in this little confined space. Uh, so there's going to be things like that that we get done and, and it's, it's not going to look exactly like my vision in my head looks, right? But... For the most part, when we when we were doing the expansion here at this place, when we we're going to put the second floor on, I had already visualized the feeling <laughs> of everything. You know what it was going to feel like to walk up the stairs, what it was going to feel like to take the elevator, what it was going to feel like to to be overlooking this, doing whatever the case is. And 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 I, I've I've been up until recently, I have been reluctant to put that mental energy into across the street. Now I'm completely committed, right? And, and over the last, you know, three, four weeks, um, I've put that mental energy and now I can see how that building is going to look and how it's going to feel. Again, there's going to be days and, and I, and, and, and with, with 1.0 Reptarium and 2.0, it was the same thing happened. My favorite moment, uh, in both places ever was the, the, the night that like with Reptarium 1.0, for instance, um, we were open before we had every, I mean, we were literally open at, at four o'clock or yeah, four o'clock and we were putting animals in cages at three forty-five. Yep. Right. So we had no time to enjoy, but I remember that night we closed at nine and, and, and I remember everyone left and I was there alone for the first time, you know, and, so and, 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 you know, uh, that was my favorite moment of 1.0 is that, that moment that I like, wow, we did it. We, you know, we, we, we literally opened up and, and, and I remember walking around, like I talked to you guys a lot of times, like I, I turned the lights out, just the cage lights are on, which, you know, when we're open to the public, you know, the lights, the, the, the overhead lights are on so people can see themselves and stuff like that and take pictures. And, and, but I like the place when it's dark and, and you got to remember the aquarium is going to be much like that, right? The reptarium is still going to be light, 
But when you walk into the, the, the aquarium, it's going to be dark and just the aquariums are going to light up until you get into the string gray area and then that'll be light again so people can take pictures of them, you know, petting or feeding or, or uh, right. swimming with stingrays. But most of the aquarium is going to be dark. But, I, you know, so I remember that night 1.0 very well, um, you know, turning the lights off and, uh, and, 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 and walking around and being like, wow, you know, this is awesome. And then, of course, 2.0, I, it was before we opened because we were we had everything in a day or two before we did the grand opening. So it was the same thing. I remember, you know, walking through 1.0 and 2.0 when it was done by myself. No one else was in the building. Everyone else had went home, and and I remember being able just to finally go like absorb all the hard work and and and, and the money and the time and the energy and and the the blood, sweat, and tears, and be able to just now go wow, you know. And, and I know this expansion is going to be next level. I mean, it's going to be, it's like when when that night when I'm in there and I always think about this, like, I wonder how many times I'll get in with the stingrays when no one's around. I would love to, you know, like, like, you know, I wonder how many times security footage. Yeah. I wonder how many times it's like, I'm going to just be like, all right, it's the end of the night. Uh, I'm gonna take I'm, a dip. I'm gonna just jump in with the stingrays. Oh, in the summer yeah. when it's hot out and all hot. Oh yeah. It's and, be so uh, nice. And, and I think that I'll do that, you know, more than, than I probably even think I will do it, to be honest with you. So, um, but, but I mean, it, it's going to be such a, a more grand uh, experience. Dude, not even and, when you just, when we were fully done. Imagine when like the frontage is done. Yeah. Driving to work every day. Yeah. And, and seeing, seeing it that, across seeing the, it, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It, it's yeah. going to be nuts, dude. Yeah. It's going to be really nice. But, uh, uh, so yeah, it's exciting times. Let's hit a couple supers. Sure, Katie did says question: Do any of the bar checks like cats? You know, it's interesting. I love cats. You know, I've never owned a kitten or a kitty cat. A kitty, kitty. Um, I've worked with big cats a lot, uh, but but I I like cats. Yeah. I, and, and I should actually well, it's, she's not a bar check anymore. She's an Albrecht. But uh, uh, my daughter keeps cats she's had cats uh, oh, since she that. was in co- college so we had cats at my house for a couple years uh before well a year and a half before she moved out uh and uh but but i had do- my husky wanted to kill him all the time mm. so they stayed in her room they never left her room uh unless the dogs were outside and uh and then she moved and now now she has them with her dog her husky ironically enough and and that her they get along fine so she does and uh, i love cats. i've i think i would always have loved to keep cats yeah me too uh but uh just never have but just never have yeah and, and but yeah so yeah my mom didn't like cats and we just haven't got a cat yet but we'll probably right. get a cat eventually yeah hopefully the husky so. doesn't kill it we'll see yeah yeah her huskies have a big i prey. know and he's they have a big prey drive. dude and he's psycho with it like if yeah. he, he sees a leaf blow in the wind he gets into like that predatory yeah. stance. It's we nuts. we tried a lot of different things with Artemis yeah. uh, to try to get them, him and, and the cats to like each other. And I mean, she was like, she would literally sit at Jade's door. <laughs> waiting for a mistake. All night long. Yeah, waiting for like a mistake. Like eight hours, eight hours she would sit there on alert, oh, no. hoping that that somehow she could get in that room or that room door would open. She could get. It. I mean, we, she did that for a year. <laughs> yeah, for like a yeah. year straight, she would sit at that door, so just funny. waiting for those cats. So there was no break in that one. No, no there was no break. In that I don't one. think there will be with Ouija either. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see. Uh, Rebecca says uh, she's keeping busy decorating for Halloween. Yeah, Halloween's so good. You know, I mean, oh, I can't so believe good. that it's literally a week away. It doesn't feel uh, like it, especially it's today. Crazy. It's kind of nice out. Yeah, it's cr- it's mm. crazy that to think that Halloween is so close. But um, I love Halloween. It's, it's, it's the two holidays I love the most are Fourth of July and, and Halloween. Those are my two favorite holidays. I'm I love you. scary stuff. I love scary movies. Which, by the way, did you watch? Um, did I tell you about the the Netflix series The Watcher? No, it's a good one. Banger. It's a good one. All yeah, right, I'm gonna watch, start it tonight because yeah, I just finished Midnight Club and I haven't. So I'm watching. T- so I don't watch a lot of. Th- no, but there's some good I, ones. And out when now. I watch series, sometimes it takes me a long. Like I haven't f- finished Stranger Things yet. No, no, I haven't I finished feel, Stranger, yeah. Stranger Things, and I started watching it like when it came out. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, but but Lori loves The Watcher. Okay, and okay. so we're we're just on episode. Th- we're we're on, we just finished episode two. Is this Netflix? There's only yeah, Netflix seven Sweet. episodes. That's it. Don't know if it ends. I don't know if there'll be a season two. I I I, I kind of hope there isn't because I hope there's a finale. Yeah. Uh, to what's happening. Uh, but then then I've been watching the Midnight Club. Lori doesn't like it that I much. I can't believe that. Uh, I thought so, she would have loved it. That's yeah. So crazy. I've only watched two episodes of that one too, oh, so and good. that's a banger as well. So, but Halloween, I love 
mm. scary movies. I love the I vibe. Love, I, yeah, I love scary movies. I love the whole thing. You know, I mean, when I was younger, obviously I played in a band called the Cem- you know, Cemetery. And, yeah. and we used to hang out in cemeteries, especially in the fall when you go out and there'd be fog at night. Yeah. And, like tonight, there'll probably be fog, yeah. you know? Yeah, Because yeah. it's been, you know, 70 degrees and the day is going to drop, drop pretty low. So probably tonight when you get out into the, 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 the we used to drive out like, you know, like 20, 30 into miles. The into the actual country and yeah, stuff, Yeah, into right? the country. And there was always fog at the wow. cemeteries. We'd just go out and hang out and, you know, we may or may not have indulged in and, some illegal yeah, activities. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, yeah, allegedly. But I'm not going to say that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, not not grave robbing. Or like <laughs> yeah, you need you to specify say, what yeah, you get into. I, I, I you're like, like in the graveyard. You're like not necromancy or nothing. No, 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 no. I was talking like underage drinking and stuff like that. You <laughs> yeah, you got to watch, dog. Yeah, not, not, I didn't do any of that no, stuff. No, Halloween's yeah. the best, man. Like you said, just even driving down the street right now and people have their decorations out. There's mm-hmm. fall leaves blowing across the sky. You see a couple black cats. It's a good time. It is, it is. It's a good time, so that's good. Acacia says, hey, Brian, I used to work at Nerd, and I visit okay. often. Timmy and Kevin are friends of the family. Was wondering if you plan to visit again. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I love Tim. I love uh, I love Kev. Uh, haven't been out there. This is probably the longest I've been in a yeah, long time been. since I haven't been out there in a while. I mean, We haven't been like, since before, right before, maybe a couple weeks before uh, COVID, before uh, we opened 2.0. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. So it's been, yeah, three years since I've been out there. So uh, it is a long trip. I think that's the, that's what keeps me away a little bit is that, you know, if you're driving out there, it's, it's a long, it's a, it's a journey, you know I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, a long it's, a, trip. it's like 11 hour drive and, and it's, you know, kind of a boring drive too. Cause you're driving up, you know, through the, the, the top end of Pennsylvania and, and there's not a lot there, but I do love visiting kevin i love visiting his place and and uh his animals are amazing and uh definitely really cool so d- i'll get out there sooner than later i'm sure that we'll get back there like i said my hands are going to be a little bit full this next little bit yeah uh, i i don't with I, the know, expansion and animal con yeah there's, yeah, there's a lot expansion going on. there's animal con of course we are going to australia in the the in the beginning of march normal life uh, we're going, <laughs> like, to, yeah. going to africa in in, in, in april. april um and, and i have to you know again you know like I was talking about when I said that we're going to, you know, take you guys along on a journey, you know, part of that journey is going to be spending time in universal rock down in, yep. in, in, in Garland, Texas. And you guys are going to see us build cause we're building all new enclosures for reptiles. We're not taking any of the enclosures from reptarium across the street. So, um, it's a lot so, of enclosures. So it's a yeah. lot of enclosures that we have to build. We have to basically build the entire 1.0 and 2.0 over again. Um, are so, you going to yeah. do it exactly the same or do you switch no. it up? I'm, I'm yeah, glad. it'll be a lot different. Yeah, Good, a I'm lot glad. different. Yeah, I'm excited just because I want to see something different. I think it'll be yeah, cool. and I think there'll be some stuff that is similar. Yeah, uh, but not a carbon copy. But not even close to a carbon Sick. copy. Like I think with like say Lucy's cage, right? Yeah. What I could see is, is it's ten foot long, six foot deep, and eight foot seven and a half foot tall, right? Yeah. What I could see is is making it more like eight foot on one side and six foot on the other side mm. so that's like angled you know yeah. what I mean? so it's not like just straight not a cube know? yeah it's yeah, because everything is i want that feel i don't want straight lines i want like that's i want cool. flow i want things like that so so that that's kind of what mm. I, I envision is is not as many straight cages and more like curved cages more like more like you know like uh, uh baby cushes type stuff you know neo where angles. there's like yeah neo angles or corners like like the albino iguanas cage it's square but i love the fact that that it's glass on two sides. Yeah. You know, like I want to do more of that type of stuff for sure. Those specialty ones. Yeah, those are the I coolest ones. Kids. And those are the coolest ones. I mean, when you yeah. walk around the reptarium, you're, those are the ones that you're like, whoa, those yeah. enclosures are nuts. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so those are all things I'll be doing. Yeah. Sherry Spencer Studios says, hey, Brian and Jay. So I work for a petting farm and I, a petting farm. <laughs> and I was uh, wondering what your best advice would be for suggesting a wildlife art gallery reptile house that I would run at the farm to my boss. Well, you know, I think that, you know, first off, awesome. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you got into that, you know, you, you could, you know, uh, pitch your boss that you're going to bring more people, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, whenever you can expand beyond, you know, a petting farm, uh, which is cool by itself. I mean, you know, I, I still love going to petting farms. Uh, but, you know, if you can, you know, entertain a different audience, um, it just makes it that much better, right? You know, so the pitch to your boss is, hey, listen, we're going to bring more people in. And, and you can also charge for that experience too. So let's say you, you, you know, you have a, a charge to go into the petting farm, but there's an extra charge to go into the reptile house. Yep. Um, doesn't have to be a lot. It can be $2, $5, whatever the case may be. And so your, your boss can, can realize like, wow, this is actually a, a gener, you know, a money generating 
a, addition to the right. petting farm. So you're going to bring a, a different clientele in. You're going to make some more money, and you get to see, you know see and work with a lot of cool animals. So that's that's what I would do. Yeah, I agree with you 100. Yeah. percent Toad, Toad Ranch, Ranch got two. Oh, oh geez, they drop in a banger, and they said, "Have you visited Wonders of Wildlife Bass Pro? I guess it is yeah, yeah. aquarium in yeah. Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. Uh, definitely yeah. some cool features there, and it's close to us at Toad Ranch. And they also said, oh. "Oh, make sure you incorporate those orbs that kids can climb into the tanks, the bubbles." The 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 bubble thing where you put your head in, so you know what I'm saying. So you can put oh your yeah head yeah in yeah yeah yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah we yeah. just talking about that today. Um, uh, yes. First off, yes. And by the way, Toad Ranch, thank you guys. I, I love you guys. And I didn't realize you're near there. So so that place is is supposed to be ridiculous. Forrest Galante just went there before Animal. Con oh really? And uh, and did a, a, like a weekend there, a uh, little meet and greet and stuff like that. And it's um. It's go up that that again. Did it say who built it? Because it's, it said Bass Pro. Is it Bass Pro? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like the guy that owns Bass Pro oh, wow, literally cool. like put millions and I mean like tens of millions of dollars into this ginormous place wow. that is supposed to be just absolutely ridiculous. I Gotta mean, go. um, it, so yeah. And, and if you're by Springfield, we'd love to come visit you too. You go get you some know. throat rolls or something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. It would stop at, uh, it would stop Lambert's. at uh, Lambert's on the way. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, um, Let's make that happen, Toad Ranch. Let's let's get Maybe together. Maybe on one of our trips down to Texas when we're building the enclosures. Yeah, out, it'd be a we'll good stop way to. Early. Yeah, it'd be a great way to stop. You know, stop at, at Toad Ranch. Stop at the the aquarium. Mm, um, there it and is. I can ask Forrest because uh, because they brought him here there as an appearance. I'm sure he has connections to the people that run it, and and we could probably go down and do some really fun stuff there. So, uh, but no, I I know of the place very very well, and it, it's it's supposed to be world world class. So I can't wait to see it and and to come see. I was just watching Toad Ranch putting backdrops, like putting the backdrop on the, the picture cage. ones. Oh my god, dude, it's such so a good idea. Like, why is no one else doing? Which, that, by the way, man? Toad Ranch, hit me up. I have an idea for you. By the way, just so you know. Oh, okay, I it, thought I'll let you know after too. But yeah, yeah, it's a but, good idea. But they're doing great. So I mean, they're putting universal rock backdrops in. They're doing the backdrops there. They're doing their I mean, cages are just yeah. a bomb. Dude. Yeah, no, they're they're killer, man. They're killer. Latrocious asks, will RJ be in the new building since he's getting a water feature, or will he stay in the reptarium? It's a good question. Originally, I thought for sure he was coming to the new reptarium. Uh, we're still in the design phase, and I can tell you this: the only thing that could could stop it is square footage. Uh, you know, it, it, you'll even know this place is six times the size, a little bit more than six times the size of the Reptarium. Um, it's shocking how quickly space gets eaten up because we have to, again, you know, salt and pepper have to have a 20 foot long enclosure. Um, you know, we want to make Ivy a bigger enclosure. We want to make, uh, some of our, our snakes that, that are retics that are, are in good cages now, but, but in a year are going to be too big. Um, we want to make those cages for them. We, uh, and then when you get into the fish side, not only do the fish tanks, the size tanks that we're talking about doing take up a tremendous amount of space, but more importantly, uh, the, the back of the house takes up a lot of space, the filtration and all the stuff, the QT tanks and all that type of stuff. There's a lot. So if you have a 24,000 square foot, 23, 24,000 square foot, 4,000 of that square foot is probably back of the house, yep. um, which brings you down to 20,000 square foot, which still is a lot, or 19,000 square foot, which is still a lot, but you figure then there's a 1,000 square foot for a gift shop, right? You know, so, and the entrance, so that brings us down to 18,000 square foot. Then you're going to take up 7,000 square foot for reptiles, you know, um, which is a slight increase of what we have now. So that brings you down to 12,000 square foot. So now you've got 12,000 square foot, and that's before you're even talking about mammals and fish. So, so it, it, it starts eating up really quick. And, and will I have enough space? Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know. So, so I would love that to happen. I would love, 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 love that to happen. But, um, I just don't know yet. We're, we're, st we're still, I think in the next month, we're going to have that answer. You know, we'll have a layout within the next month. And then, uh, that's it for now, but keep the yeah. super chats coming. Do you want to yeah. hit this thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so listen guys, I got something to show you. Let, let's just watch this video first. Okay. Give me one second. Got you. All right. I'm going to eat a Dorito while we're watching this. Guys are all like, what the hell are we watching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's this kid, man? Huh. 
<laughs> you spilt it. So this is uh, orange juice, Kool-Aid, <laughs> and chocolate milk. What a combo. Yeah. Oh, no. This is what you challenge your friends to. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it spill it all over him. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a hell no, you know? So, all right, I'm eating my Dorito. Yeah, yeah, eat your Dorito, dog. Um, so that is, um, for those of you guys that don't know, you got, you know, people have been following me for quite some time. Uh, it's been years. Um, you may remember what that is. That's actually called the Tipster. And that was a, a, a product that we manufactured. Uh, you know, I designed, manufactured, uh, patented. First it was patent pended. Now it's full, full patented. Um, and it's just been basically sitting around. Hasn't done anything. Uh, it's a drinking game. Uh, you know, obviously that one was, was, uh, um, best son, uh, doing it with Lori pouring, you know, first pouring stuff that tasted good, that mix, you know, you mix different types of drinks and it makes, yeah, it makes something different. Or yeah. you can mix something that's terrible, like Kool-Aid, orange <laughs> juice and chocolate milk and, and, uh, and so challenge gross. yourself. Or as an adult, you can do, uh, cha Mixers. champagne and, and orange juice, or you could do, you know, some liquor slash whatever or you could do beers. You can go, they come in a three pack. You can add six or eight or, or six or nine or 12 or however many you want. They hook together and go as long as you want. So if you want to pound six beers, all at once, you can fill up six cups and literally hammer that whole and thing And look down. like a badass doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, so we haven't done anything with it. Obviously, it's like I mentioned, you know, the timing wasn't very good. We got it, you know, done just before the pandemic. And then obviously, you know, having a drinking game where people are, you know, exchanging fluids is not the right you know thing to do during um, a global pandemic. A global pandemic. <laughs> so now that, you know, we're, we're I'm not going to say we're past it, but life is pretty much back to normal. Uh, we, we are we launched that the website again it's called the tips of challenge um and uh I'll, I'll i'll try to remember to put a link in the description um and um uh, or look it up or whatever and um and those will be available again uh they are available again so if you're interested in having a little party you know sick of pong you know beer pong or uh sick whatever you can uh, you can uh, use the uh, tipster and, and have some fun at your local party or your holidays or if you're you know tailgating, uh, it's a great tailgate thing. Heck so yeah. so uh, so let me know uh, what you guys think in the chat and super chats uh, of this craziness. Uh, yeah, my mind is really warped, isn't it? <laughs> and then Maria says, uh, "What's your favorite clutch you produced this year and your favorite snake you hatched?" It's really tough to That's say. That's a hard one. Dude. I mean, I think the, the the like Lori stuff, you know, the Lori ball, toy, the ball python stuff is probably my favorite yeah. so far because we've had some surprises that that don't make sense. Uh, we've also had some surprises in the pumpkin gene. Uh, that's there's a video coming out on it on yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and the mystery. Uh, and the mystery stuff has been really good. Um, it's a but, hard but it's year. really hard to, to pick favorites, you know, I mean, cause there's a lot of clutches that, that didn't necessarily weren't like earth shattering, like whatever, but just some really beautiful snakes. Yeah. Um, you know, a bunch of clown stuff that was really, really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say what, what I think is, is the best or anything like that, but, but definitely, um, definitely some pretty cool stuff this year, no doubt about it. So I'm, I'm pretty blessed about that, but, but yeah, you know, back to the tipster thing, um, you know, I don't know exactly where I'm going to go with it. You know, I, you know, I, I, I always try to tell people that, um, you know, I, I, I try to be a person that like when I, when I envision something, I try to make action behind, behind, you know, so, so I believe in thoughts and actions, right? A lot of people think about a lot of things, but then don't put action behind it and make it a reality. And not everything you're going to do is going to be super uh, incredible. I mean, right now, I'm super in the dark or in the black, or I'm sorry, in the red um, with the tipster. You know what I mean? I, I paid for patent. I paid you know tons of money for attorneys for patents. I paid to developers. I played prototypers. I had to build a tooling, mold. Yeah. yeah, the tooling for the mold. I had to then, sh you know, you have to do at least 10,000 units at a time. So we had to shoot that. We had to buy, uh, you know, we had shipping. We had, I mean, it's, it's, you know, a lot, a lot. That's a hundred thousand dollars. You get into it before you even have a product in your hand. Um, and, and will it ever be successful? I have no idea. I don't know. I, I, I think that in the right circumstance with the right marketing, I think it can be really, really huge because it's a fun thing. And I, I've never, I don't drink, which is like the irony behind me making a drinking game. 
But I remember once we had a party here at the Reptarium, and uh, and 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 it was right after we opened the Reptarium. I mean, literally like a week after. It was kind of like a grand opening party. It was just like our crew and closest friends, and it was kind of funny because actually one of the city council members came by huh. when we were partying. <laughs> no uh, way, yeah, really. And, and he just like the door was open, and he just like walked in the door with his dog of all things. Weird. And um. And, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, you know, I don't think we were actually open. I think we were actually, this was, I think, pre-open. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were just having like a, a get-together party, like, because uh, we were close to opening yeah. or something. Like I, I can't remember if it was before or after. But, um, but I remember city council member, I'm thinking like, oh gosh, this is, this this is, is a first. good look. <laughs> yeah, we walk in and we're partying and stuff like that. But I remember a bunch of, like Aaron Jones was here yeah, and yeah. a couple other people were here and they were pounding those and they got so hammered. <laughs> On the tips. Yeah, 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 tips were like, because, oh my God. Because you know? it's fun to do, you're not thinking about it as yeah. much, right? Yeah, you're, you're like... drinking three beers in one shot. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's so like, because you want to get to the, yeah, I was like, go, 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 you know? And uh, so, so I think that if it gets marketed the right way and people, it, it gets viral, um, that I think it can be something that could could really be big you know but i agree because it's like the funnel right it's a different way to drink it cause it allows you to have a little bit more fun yeah and and plus you can challenge your friends like i'm gonna drink four well i'll do five you know and i'll do six (laughs) you know whatever the case may be uh or you could just do it at home as a drunk you know by yourself you know (laughs) like me Uh, but um um but but you know i have a lot of ideas that that I, i i write in a book uh, my idea book, it, it, and, and, and there's always a time that I say it's ready, right? So a lot of these ideas, I mean, I have, I have probably 100 plus ideas. Some of them may never come to fruition, not because I don't want to put action behind them, because I just don't think the time is right to put action behind them. There's a project that I'm about to work on. I, well, I'm, I'm actually already working on it, but but it, I don't know exactly when it'll come to fruition, but I think it's like going to happen in the next several months that I've been working on for like five years. Uh, and it just was kind of sitting still for five years and now it's rejuvenated and, and, and I'm working on it. Uh, and I'll tell you guys more about it in the future, but I think again, it, it could be a really, really, really big project. Um, and it, now the time is right. You know, that the opportunities I met a particular person that was the person I needed to know that made it can make this happen. Right. And, uh, and I met him at Tinley, ironically enough. And, uh, and, and now we've had several conversations. I think this, this project to move forward. Uh, but, but that's my point with the tipster is that, you know, it was just, it was something that I came up with an idea. It was action behind. Yeah. I put some action behind it. It became a reality has not been a success yet. Hopefully one day will be a success. Who knows? Maybe not. We'll have to wait to see, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's always exciting to, to, um, to see something like that. And, and because we just la- relaunched the website literally this week, the tipsterchallenge.com, uh, which by the way, we have to be careful. I'm going to probably change that because so the tipster.com, I think I might have the tipster.com, but tipster.com was taken. And, uh, and I, and, and the guy was like, who the fuck is using tipster.com? And so, so sure enough, I reached out. This was a few years back when I was developing it. And, uh, which by the way, you know who came up with the name? No. Steve Bashy. No way. He came up with the name, the tipster. No way. How? Yeah, yeah. Really? Just out of nowhere. He's like, oh, you should call it the tipster. I'm like, that's it. That's a it's great a, name. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I might have the tipster.com, but tipster.com was taken. And so I reached out through a broker and the guy came back and he was like, yeah, the guy will sell it for 1500 bucks. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll buy it for 1500. Then he comes back and goes, no, he said 2500. I said, I won't pay more than 2000. And the guy said, nope, he won't go less than 25. I said, then eat it. Yeah. I said, yeah. eat, eat yeah. that thing because no one's ever going to buy that ever in no. the rest of your eternity. Especially so, that you have you the know. tipster. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and a patent on it, you know. Yeah. But weirdly enough, there's a, a horse racing thing called the tipster challenge. Get out. Are you for real? Yeah, there's a, ra- a horse racing. So I have the, That's tip- weird. I have the tipster challenge com they have the tipster slash or dot or dash challenge challenge.com no way that yeah. so it must have been newer then right like yeah they're, yeah it wasn't there before oh, then so, they're beat. <laughs> so but uh but but anyways we may change the actual to url the... to not have the tipster challenge we may call it just the tipster or, or some variants thereof but um but if you're interested you could do that or you could email bhb or reptarium or anything like that if you want to get a tipster they're 15 bucks they come in a dishwashing uh wash mesh bag so you literally at the end of the night you just zip it up throw it in the dishwasher 
and wash it. And it's just pieces ready to go. aren't all flying yeah, everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah, good to go. Exactly. Pieces aren't flying out. You got all the bacteria off and viruses <laughs> off, and and you're good to go. But uh, so but I, yeah, I, I just wanted to share it since we did relaunch that uh, site this week. So oh, that's awesome. So hopefully we'll sell a couple of these puppies because I've got ten thousand units sitting in the basement. <laughs> next For, door. Yes, you do. Uh, Candace says, "What are the enclosures for salt, pepper, and RJ going to be like?" Uh, so, uh, you know, again, RJ, I don't know, which by the way, thank you for the super chat. You're yeah, awesome. Of course. Um, um, but I know, let's talk about salt and pepper because that's the one I've been focusing on. We're, we're looking at like a 20 foot long enclosure that will, will have, uh, at least six feet of land from front to back. And it's going to be about 10 feet wide, right? So it's going to be about 20 foot by 10 foot. So 200 square feet essentially of space. That's crazy. And then there'll be enough area that they can get out. Uh, six foot by 10 foot that they can get out and bask. But then I want to have a strip of land in the back that they could walk across and then have another strip of land on both sides. Cage. So basically there'll be two doors on either side of the cage, water in the middle, right? And so we'll have like some waterfalls and water in the middle. And then of course they'll be able to climb up, you know, like a ramp is, you know, like not a ramp, but you know, it'll yeah, be a mountain like a, yeah, like rock. It'll, it'll look rocky that they can climb up onto the thing and actually bask. But this way they can, they we could, we can station them and feed on either side of the 20 foot enclosure, right. open the door, they come out, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's, that's salt and pepper. Um, and again, if RJ can come out, he'll get something very similar. The question is just going to be, can I take up another, can I take up 400 square foot of space for the alligators or can I only allocate 200 and that's just going to be how much space we can actually figure out where to use and how to use it uh, Maria says please get Noah Mike and Jay on a video racing with the tipster <laughs> uh, it, it, it would be good I think it'd be interesting to see because interesting enough Noah and Jay don't drink much at all if at all you know very little drinking uh, I don't think Mike is a drinker, but I think no. he drinks a little he bit. Has a couple of beer. Yeah, has a beer here and there. So I, I think you know Mike might be the winner of that. And but, Mike uh, looks like he could chug a beer. You know what Mike I'm saying? Mike looks like he could chug a beer for sure. Uh, Let's do it with regular drinks. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And <laughs> see who can take them down the quickest. Yeah, because I definitely don't want to like do beers and then send them on their way home. All right, guys, have All a good right. night. Yeah, have a great night. Drive careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have fun. Oh, maybe we could do it on the podcast though. Yeah, yeah, but I, I wouldn't mind. I think I want to do a piece in the vlog, anyways. Just to, as now we've launched the the tipster, yeah. maybe reintroduce the tipster uh, in the vlog, um, so that that you know people know that it's it's a thing, and and uh, you know maybe it'll it'll sell, go viral. Who knows? You know, see what happens. I need to get. You know, I have a world star connection. Um, yep. Uh, I haven't talked to him in a long, long time. It'd be really good to have a world star video. Yeah, you know what no, I mean? for like, sure. Like that, that would be probably the way to go. Maybe get like Jay, Mike, and Noah to be challenging, you know, with that and then get that onto the. Yeah, to, dude, there's so many things we can do, even like yeah. with like Noah's channel and stuff too. Like go to go to downtown Detroit and like get strangers to do it. Yeah, strangers to would tips, be dope, tips, dude. Tips. Yeah, it's so fun. It's good. Yeah, that's nice. And then LD Music says, hope you guys are doing well. Just got a T positive albino blood python last week. Love them. That's a beaut. Yeah, yeah, T positive. You know, T negs are great too. I think both of them are really good. Yeah. We just, you know, we just recently got that giant blood python from Des and Steve. Um, Should be coming over soon. Too. Yeah, it's going to be coming over to the reptarium within the next week or so. Um, and I think I, what I might do is I, yeah, I don't. I think she'll come over this week. But I think that when we go across the street. I want her and the T negative albino to be in the same cage. Yeah. I'm going to do a little bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more cohabitating at Sick. the new place. I'm excited for so, that. So, like, I, I want to have, like, we have a really big albino boa female, and I want to put the motley male in with her, too. Yeah. So there'll be two boas in the cage. Um, a little bit more of that, where there's, like, a male and female in a cage, uh, as opposed to just having singular animals, which is mainly what we do now. It, w not with lizards. Lizards, we have multiple animals. But with snakes, we typically... there's. I think Ivy and Ariana are the only two snakes that we have that yep. are, are d doubled up. Everything else is in a singular cage. So I want to do a little bit more of the doubling. I guess Snap and Pop are also in the same cage. Right. Um, but we don't do a lot of that. So I'm going to do a little bit more of that as I, I, as I expand into the new place for sure. But... Um, what is it? Anybody in the chat say anything about the tipster? Let's see. I'm just curious if it, what people are saying, if they, if anyone said anything good. Someone's got to be saying something about it. Freaking weirdos. It just depends on the timing. Hold on. Let me see. 
Yeah. <laughs> Scene one, and uh, think that some, you should make the boys do the tipster. Um, let me see. It's weird that soda I, and milk total no go. Um, actually, it's funny, you know, like Coke and milk is. I've is, heard that's is, is really a, good. It's a thing, man. It's well, it's a, almost a root beer. It's almost float. a root beer flow. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The tipsy. The tipsy. <laughs> you do get tipsy when you do the tipster. That's funny. That's what I see for now. That's it. Interesting. I'm surprised there's not more comments. I figured for sure people would say something, whether it's like you're an idiot, Brian, or <laughs> or, or that's cool, or or something, you know. But uh, but anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think in the the comments, and and um, we'll we'll hopefully uh, what I what I really you know want to do obviously is is partner up with like one person in particular. I won't name the name, but I, I'm trying to get to this one person to partner up with it that has a, a big following that is kind of a partier uh, and he has multi-millions of followings. And I think that if we could partner together, it would be, you know, his audience would love it. Yeah. My audience, you know, I mean, obviously I'm an animal guy. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. <laughs> it does, I'm, not, it I'm seems not a partier. It's a so Not on so, brand as much. Yeah, it's as... completely not on brand. But I think that if we can get the right uh, uh, movement behind it, I think that we can actually, you know, make some some some. Uh, oh, I guess somebody headway. seen that 19's video. They said just watched a video yeah. about it. It was pretty funny watching them try yeah. to drink it off the roof. In the yeah, video exactly. I watched. They did the, yeah, that was that was that. Yeah, you know, we we initially partnered with Vat 19 just before the 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 the, uh, uh, the pandemic, and. Um, so yeah, they did a video of, of doing it. Did you ever see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we watched yeah. it together. Okay, yeah, I, I couldn't remember. But uh, and and they and they did sell. They sold about a thousand of them before um, Kobe. Yeah, like COVID hit, and then they they were like, hey, listen, this just isn't going to work anymore. And <laughs> and, uh, and and although you know the thing about Vat Nineteen is they they are very much more kid kid. It's like a kids channel, right? Uh, they do have like an adult like you know like they do some some drinking stuff and so on like that. Um, but I don't think those videos do very well comparatively. I think that the, the kids stuff, like the ga little game stuff and, and it's just what does fun fall on stuff YouTube that, too, you know, yeah. like it, that's the stuff that, that does well for VAT 19. I don't, I, I haven't really followed. And, and I've been friends with Jamie for a long time from VAT 19. Uh, we, we've collabed with them a number of times. Um, but I don't. I ha I just haven't kept up with Vat Nineteen over the last year or so. I know they had some changes. A couple of the guys left that were like the original members right. of Vat Nineteen, and they tried to start their own thing. I don't know what happened there, and 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 then I kind of just fell off and stopped following them. And so I don't know if Vat Nineteen is still crushing or if they're. Uh, you know, you want to look it up? Wanna yeah, look yeah, yeah. Of course. Just look at. You can just go to any YouTube, like yeah. even that one. I'm gonna just go to a different one just in case. I don't want to get off your stuff for you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to look up? Uh, Vat nineteen. I'm just curious what they what they do now. You know, like if they're still crushing. Yeah, they got eight point four million. I mean, or, you know, that's a, that's a lot. But I wonder what their videos are doing. Three hundred three, two eighty eight, four seventy eight, five hundred six, five. I mean, it's not it's not terrible, but they used to get millions, millions of views. Per video, right? Can you can you look up the tipster? Yeah. From Vat them? Nine, yeah, Vat nineteen tipster. I'm just curious with with that. Uh, yeah, there it is. Seven point 7, 7. two million. Yeah, it's a lot than most. <laughs> you know? That's all. Yeah, that was a. That was a. I think wow. they changed the thumbnail too, because that wasn't the old. That thumbnail. was not the thumbnail. No, no, that was definitely not the thumbnail. That's cool though. Smart. Uh yeah. You think with seven point two million, we would have sold a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> More than a thousand. Yeah. But I I do remember that video wasn't at seven point two when no, we it, last it, looked it, at yeah, it. It was at no, like it, two something or three. Yeah, I, maybe. I think that even the beginning, it was pretty slow. Like the first you know, month, it, it did not. It and had it probably blew up as they didn't have them anymore. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. It probably blew up as they didn't have them anymore, which is a bummer because uh, that could have been good for us. But yeah, 7.2 million people watch that video. I'm going to have to go back and just read the comments. Yeah. Yeah. That that's video. a good I idea. I wonder what, what they say. Yeah. I could reach out to every comment. Like, hit me up. <laughs> yeah. Hit me up. I got them launching. Got, They're launching yeah, again. I gotcha. <laughs> Send the 15 bucks. I need, yeah. I need to build an aquarium. I gotta, yeah, I got an aquarium to build. <laughs> I got. I mean, yeah, I got. That's that's. And, and you know, it's like I've always said, guys. When I talk about money, which by the way, I want to to to. I I I don't even know if I've talked to you about this, oh uh, Jay, but uh, I had a, a guy that works in um. You know, in like a video promotional right world, and one of the things he does is master classes, and um. And, and, and he's asked me if if I want to do a master class, um, you know, that would be like, you like know, you present one, I present a master yeah, yeah. class. And, and what it would be is like basically more or less a, a situation where it's like, you know, like the, the thing would be like, hey, do you want to make 30 to $60,000 a year working with snakes? 
Um, awesome. And then I would give you the blueprint of how to do that. Um, you know, are you sick of your job and you just want to make enough money to, to play with snakes every day? Well, this is, this is how you do it, you know, and there'd be like 40, 45 videos and there'd be like this, you know, you know, you have to pay for the month or whatever, uh, a monthly fee to, to do it. Uh, well, I guess it'd be a one-time, it wouldn't be monthly, right, be right. a one-time fee to take the master class. And, and so many people do master class, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know. What do you think about that? No, I think it's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think people would really find value, especially the people that, you know, master classes are supposed to be kind of niche anyway. Right. You know, like, um, I know Peter McKinnon's done them for video and stuff yeah. like that. So it's like, if you're looking for that information online and something comes up, people are going to spend the money to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, it, but, right. So we're thinking about doing that. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that. And, and and what I want people to understand is like I'm not trying to money grab anybody, you know, whether it's super chats or master class or tipster or, or whatever I do. Um, you know, I always say I liken it to 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 Jimmy from Mr. Beast, right? Like he has all these revenue streams, you know, beast beast burgers, feastables, you know, uh uh you know, his gaming channel, reacts channels, you know, all these other types merch of things. Merch in general. Yeah, merch yeah. in general. Stuff like that. And what he does is he always says like all I want to do is make all this money so I can pour it into my main channel videos. Because most of his main channel videos lose millions of dollars. Right. Literally, he puts a video out, he loses $2 million. Yep. You know, so he's got to make $2 million on this other stuff so that he can keep losing $2 million because really what he cares about is his main channel. Yeah. You know, all the other stuff is just you know auxiliary fluff that he just does to make money so that he can continue to keep improving on his main channel and doing things that people can't do and into, and know? he's still offering value to people right because people want to watch mr beast react to the videos so sure. like, so he's offering value and making yeah money it's for not that. like he's money grabbing i mean he's doing all these things but but he's very open about the fact that i make this money so that i can yep. pour it into the main channel that's the same thing i am but just the difference not pouring it into my main channel but pouring it into the the reptarium and aquarium like you know what i mean like yep. all the money i want to make from all the facets of my life all the businesses I run and, and new businesses that I'm working on and new incentives that I'm working on, it's, it's not because I'm greedy and I want money for myself. It's that I want to make enough money so that I can create this amazing experience that, and it's not cheap, man. You know what I mean? No, it's like, it's not. like, you know, number one, it's not cheap to run the things we run now. And then you, you, you get into, you know, an aquarium where one aquarium can cost $250,000 for, for one aquarium. You know, for one tank, you're, you know, $250,000 for a tank and you're doing an entire aquarium, you know, it's, it's millions and millions of dollars. There's a reason mostly cities do aquariums. You right. Know? Yeah. And, and, and listen, a lot of them lose money the way they do it. As a matter of fact, most big city aquariums lose money yep. uh, because they're just too big and they, they're not a profitable experience. But it brings um, people to the city. And that's but the smaller goal, aquariums right? usually make really good money. Uh, because they don't have the overhead that the big aquariums have. Uh, and usually the big aquariums, yeah, exactly, are, are government funded. You know, this local state or city will pay for the aquarium so that they that they just draw people into the yeah, city. Yeah, which you know, tourism. helps the economy, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, the Atlanta Aquarium, I'm sure, puts 2 million people a year through, but they also have a tank that costs $100 billion. One tank, you know? So, so I, you know, I mean, it's hard for which them to... It's insane to think about, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like... You know, like say the Georgia Aquarium with the uh, whale sharks. I mean, yeah. how much that tank's got to be ten million dollars at least. It's a right? hundred. That's the one I was just talking about. It's a hundred. Oh, it's a hundred million. Hundred million dollars for that one tank. Jesus. Yeah, hundred million for that one tank. So, which is um, un, in like unconceivable, inconceivable. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just absolutely ridiculous. But, but so you know, that's my point is that when you hear me talk about you know these business ideas and things, you know, number one, obviously, I I, I am a a serial entrepreneur. There's no doubt about that. But but it's not out of it doesn't come out of greed and it doesn't come out about you know a lust for money it comes out of a, a lust to 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 create an experience with animals that no one else can create yeah. and to do things on a level that you know listen most people most social influencers um in in the animal space that are successful are not putting tons of money back into their animals you know what i mean i mean they, they take care of their animals i'm not saying they don't take care of their animals no but they're not what i'm saying is that they're not like they're not going and saying like i'm going to take everything i made and i'm just going to spend every dime of it to make a better place 
You know what I mean? Yep. They're not doing that. They're 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 taking the money, and and I'm not saying they're wrong. I mean, God bless them. I mean, they're buy you know maybe they buy a car, maybe they buy a house, maybe they buy boats, maybe they just sock it away for retirement or whatever right. the case may be. Um, because listen, there's no doubt that it's great money that what we do. You know, it's no doubt. And if I didn't have the aspirations to spend millions of dollars to create a place that may or may not ever make me money, much like the Reptarium, when we opened up the Reptarium, we didn't know if it was going to be profitable. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Right? I have no idea if it's going to be profitable or successful, but I'm going to spend every dollar I have. I mean, risking everything, you know, to do this experience. Yep. And that's why I, 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 I mean, it would be great if the tipster took off and I sold, you know, a hundred thousand units and made enough money to pay for a third of the aquarium. You know what I mean? Or if, uh, if the master class made me enough money, and you got to remember, if I put a master class up, maybe it makes me a hundred grand. But, but hopefully it makes you guys all 30, 40, 50 grand if you follow the master class of like, you know, like, you, you know, the master class are really nuts and bolts, right? It's like, you know, what you should buy, how you should do it, what, what you, you know, what the cost is of this, you know, what incubators you should use, you know, how you should market yourself, how you should create social media, how, you know, I mean, all what kinds moves of you're things. making to yeah. become successful. Yeah, yeah. Like how can you go from, from having $3,000 to invest to making $50,000 a year within two years. Yeah. And I know that formula. I could do that formula and I can over teach and over, you. Yeah. I could do that formula a thousand times over, you know, as long as you're willing to do the work. Now, not everyone that takes the class is going to do the work. Yeah, man, and, most and, you know, probably won't because yeah, but, but, that's you know, human right. nature. Yeah, that's human nature. But if you do the work and you do what I say, we can get you to that number. And if you hate your job, and you want to just do that, then we can get you there, yep. you know? And, and the only reason I would do that is not as a money grab, but just to help pay for the aquarium and, and pay for the expansion. Cause listen, it's uh you know, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot and it's, it's terrifying. You know, yeah. It's terrifying, you know? So, um, but, uh, but you know, we'll it's get all there. for the dream, baby. Yeah. It's all for the dream, man. All for the dream. So, so anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, I think we're done and I appreciate it. It's good to be back. Uh, I hope that you guys sure. are great. Uh, I should be here next weekend. Yep. I think. Yeah, as far uh, as I know, I think so. <laughs> as far as I know, we'll be here. If not, uh, we won't see you then. I'm not sure, though. Uh, and and uh, like I said, we'll uh, keep you guys posted on everything. Uh, go check out the tipsterchallenge.com. And, uh, Hell yeah. and, uh, and by the way, merch, obviously, another thing we do. Uh, the Halloween merch is only available for about a little more than a week. Yeah, so, and it's dope, so go get yeah, it. Yeah, so if you want that, uh, reptilearmy.com. So, all right, guys, love you. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>